Martin! What is up, Hello. buddy? Bonjour, bonjour. Minimize that. Oh, and sorry for not being in chat yesterday. I had to really focus on that prop and needed my music playlist. How dare you, sir? How dare you? You show up here all apologetic. <laughs> <laughs> you're, dude, you're totally fine. Martin, you never have to apologize, buddy. If you disappear for like a year and I don't hear from you, and then all of a sudden you pop back in and you're like, hey, <laughs> maybe I'll be like, what the hell happened, bro? <laughs> Hello! <laughs> All right. Hello, welcome in. Hey, we're just getting started today. I'm joined by very talented and an awesome artist, Kamara. Say oh, hello, Kamara. Hello. hello. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Ryan, what's happening? Zillion, how you doing? Um, I'm gonna get a a link right now. It's the same link as yesterday, but I'm gonna get a link right now so you guys can watch both of us at the same time. If you would like to see what Kamara is up to so there is the link because we are dual streaming uh, this is a piece I was currently working on I kind of wanted to show it off a little bit um, it's not quite done yet but it is definitely good there it was a memorial piece so I was really working on a likeness and trying to get that pushed and it's getting it ready for 3d printing so this is kind of where we're at on it so this is what you're staring but today is feet anatomy Wiggle, wiggle, toesies, toesies. <laughs> <laughs> How's everybody doing? By the way, Martin, that piece came out beautiful. I saw it, I liked it, I loved it. Great job, dude. Okay. Dude, that looks great. Thank you so much, man. Yeah. I am, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful that they like it. I already got feedback once, and they said they did like it um, for the most part. Um, I just had to really lock in that likeness, so, so yeah. Yay, Sloby Art, what's happening? What is happening? Hi, Sloby. Okay. So what we're gonna do now is let's start up Stream Raiders. Let's get that happening. Nice. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Stream Raiders. I'm gonna go with a mystery, cause why not? We're just gonna start this up now. Sloby says, hey, Kamara. <laughs> hey. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> yeah. So feet today. That is what is happening. Um So if you got any anatomy feet questions, you know I'll be honest, I've only sculpted like a foot twice. That hasn't been an issue. I've never really, really sculpted a detail foot I, before. I don't think I've ever done a fully detailed foot. You don't so think so? We, I don't think so. Yeah. Well, not a human foot. I've done a creature feet, but nothing with five toes and normal nails. And yeah. First time for everything, right? <laughs> It'll be an adventure today. It will be an adventure. I'm thinking about pretty much starting it off kind of the same way that uh, I'm really liking the balloon mesh for blocking stuff out. Um, I think it's really, really cool. So I think I might do something like that. But also, guys, I had to share with you all, if you go on my Twitter account, I tweeted out a cracked.com article about Twitch TV, and it was a really interesting read because it talks about some of the issues that I personally had with Twitch with buying affiliate and there being weird, you know, uh, DMCA uh, shutdowns, copyright issues. It's a very interesting article and I highly recommend it. So if you guys want to read for like, a ten, you want a 10 minute read, that's a really good one, so. Oh, okay, hey, right. Wismar. Good morning. Feet anatomy. Best fear ever. Yeah, it'll be a foot later. <laughs> <laughs> right. All right. So I actually multi-stream link. 
Yeah. Also, I really like that um, I've been pulling reference at the start of the stream. Mm -hmm. So that way people can kind of see what kind of reference uh, we pull and just give them that, that idea. Yeah, I had pulled reference before the first day and then I lost it because I didn't save my peer ref. Um, and then since then, I've just been like, you know what? I like finding it on stream. It's kind of fun. Yeah, I, I agree. We may have to be careful uh, doing a torso anatomy yeah uh, next week i think um you know some of the reference Especially i've pulled mine so being forth, a lady torso <laughs> right yeah um so i think we'll i think we'll be a little bit careful but but overall i think it'll be fine so i'm going to be using some of these charts for the balloon mesh to get like just kind of a a quick block out of the foot but Feet are just ugly hands, so should be pretty, pretty straightforward. Who said that? Somebody said that this week in my chat, and I remembered it. So credit to them. I remember someone saying that. Yeah, I don't remember who it was though. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna guess Slobie. Maybe that's something Slobie said. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like a Slobie thing to say, and I love it. All right. Or was it Ryan? <laughs> <laughs> oh, poor Ryan. Dude, Ryan, last mm. night it was hilarious because um, I was uh, lurking in uh, A-Cube's stream on her Pixo stream because it was her first one back and I wanted to go support. I used to watch her all the time when I really got into sculpting. She was one of the artists I watched. Well, somebody like had like was trying desperately to get her opinion on NFT. <laughs> mm. They kind of coaxed it out of her, and Ryan was just like, "Oh, Ian, I can't do this again, man. I, really, I can't do this." <laughs> and I was like, "Yeah, no, you're fine, brother. You're fine. Don't uh, ice those fingers." <laughs> right. Oh, Sophie, I was saying, uh, somebody the other day said that feet are just ugly hands, and it stuck with me. And I thought maybe you had said it. I given you credit. So if it wasn't you, say you did it. And if it was you, say you did it. Right. It was slowly. <laughs> it was slowly. Take the credit. <laughs> okay. Oh, I have a Luna yowling again. We'll see if anybody can hear her. Yeah. Uh, not me, but sounds right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm also going to look up uh, bottom foot muscles. Because I think the pads of the feet are very important to mm -hmm. to get right. And although you don't really see the muscles of the foot so much, you definitely, um, I mean, you definitely uh, do get like, they're like pads you more see. So I kind of want to make sure I get that right. Just finished watching 127 Hours, and it is such an amazing movie. It is, man. Such a great movie. That movie made me feel my left arm the first time I watched it. I never <laughs> felt my arm the way that movie made me feel it. Have you seen that movie, Kamara? I haven't. I'm not sure if I would make it all the way through, honestly. It's actually not... Like, what about it do you think would make you not go all the way through? Uh, mostly the watching him, well, you know, the, the removal of a limb. <laughs> Spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's not that bad, actually. It's not as okay. gory as people would, not as gory as you think See, it might be. Gore doesn't get me. There are weird things about that kind of thing that get me, like sounds. Yeah. Okay. Th there's some sound effects, but it's not it's not that <laughs> it's not that bad. It's the anticipation cuz mm. I don't know about cuz you know exactly what the movie is going in. And it's just like, oh god, when's it going to happen? Yeah. I I definitely would say most people know what that movie what they're getting themselves into. I feel like that's one I recommended for uh Martin to watch. But yeah, you 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 get the sense of what 127 hours is. I knew what it was when I picked it up, so 
yeah, the soundtrack is also really good and it really mm. immersed you, yeah. It's okay, Ryan. I promise today isn't going to be so crazy, but Ryan, <laughs> I say that uh, with a little bit of, I, uh, I don't know if you were here, but I, I did share a cracked article on Twitter, so you have to go check that out. Um, it's an interesting read, but don't worry. I'm not really feeling any really in crazy in-depth conversations on my side. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm just enjoying the rain here. <laughs> well, it's raining. I love That's rain. right. Yeah, I love rain too. We don't get enough of it in California. Yeah, that I lived in California for six years, and everybody's like, "Oh, it's so cool," and I'm like, "It never rained though." Yeah, you lived in the Bay Area too, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah, which that gets and the like, most rain, in my opinion. Yeah, and I think it rained maybe six times the whole time I lived there, and four of those were in the last year I was there. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, when I was a kid, see, we, we well, not so much, I mean, I lived here my whole life for the most part. I've lived in other parts as an adult, but whole childhood was in California, and all throughout California, because my, my dad lived up in uh, the Bay Area, and my mom lived here in Los Angeles. Um, and so, long story short, um, I... And traveling back and forth, I got I got to see a lot of California, and we definitely had El Nino's, which is just like rain central. It just devastates the entire area with rain. And then we have uh, El Nino, which is dry season, and we had mm -hmm. more El Ninos than El Ninos for about ten years, and that really caused a problem. California's hit quite a few droughts um, that have been devastating. Luckily, actually, it's uh, it's been pretty nice so far. It's rained a decent amount this year, for what it is. Yeah, it's raining. New Jersey got uh... Twitch muting Metallica. Uh... Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Wait, yeah. what did? Were they streaming or something, and Twitch muted them? Yeah, Twitch. Uh, Metallica was playing at BlizzCon 2021. Oh, I forgot about that. And then they're not allowed to play your own music. <laughs> and they were playing, they were playing their their music, and they was being streamed because you know COVID, and um, yeah, they got muted. <laughs> oh, Twitch! I completely forgot about that. That makes uh, Living Vertex's Texas booby band just as funny, really, but slightly less frustrating because it's just like they hit everyone. Yeah, uh, Martin. I think the issue uh, with having no rain is that the, pr the probability the air is hor that probably the air is horrible. Expect uh, mm -hmm. if you live directly at the beach. Yeah, no, um, it is weird. California is dry. Um, those who've lived in California, um, more specifically towards SoCal, because um, the Bay Area is. It's very windy and it has a lot it has a good beach smell to it depending on where you live but there's a lot of farms up there too so you definitely get a lot of um you get a lot of mixed scents <laughs> but uh in in socal um it's very dry because we live in the desert essentially where i'm at i live in the desert and so it's very dry and it gets very cold and very and the wind is bone piercing so mm -hmm. when it gets when it rains it's an odd amount of moisture because we're so used to it being dry here um that that moisture actually gets people sick it's really interesting yep. although the rain used to be really good because we used to be so toxic we used to, our, our ozone layer was terrible back in the 90s and when it would rain it would actually it would actually like more people would go outside because there wasn't as much smog in the air, um, which sounds really gross, but it's Los Angeles, baby. What can you do? <laughs> but now we actually have some in of the Colorado, cleanest airs. Colorado always had the issue of one year there would be forest fires, and then the next year it would rain a whole lot. And then because one, Colorado is a cold desert, mm -hmm. and two, everything had burned down the year before, it was just like fires one year, floods the next. Yeah, that's because there was nothing for the water to absorb into, and no ocean for it to run off into either, because it's landlocked. Yeah, that's crazy. 
Where's the feet already? <laughs> hey, Deadpool, how you doing? <laughs> it's coming, it's coming, they're coming. They're coming. Got some references here. I have, there are feet on my screen, they're just not my sculpted the, feet yet. Not your sculpted feet yet? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah it's... It, Tamara and I, we lag in the morning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, one more time. Uh, but we're getting there. I don't know. I have a feeling that uh, feet aren't going to take four hours to sculpt. Right. <laughs> so. It's Dr. A. Hello. So, hello, Dr. A. All right. I'm going to actually save this to the desktop. This is up, dude. The first thing I see is feet. Yep. We're sculpting feet today. We're sculpting feet. It's anatomy week. And today's foot day. Yep. Feet. We'll get the torso eventually. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna be using this drawing, and I'm gonna be using that blue mesh uh, by importing it as a texture. I think it's gonna be. It's definitely the best approach, I think, for me. Mm-hmm. Is it really inspired. just kind of? Inspired. Hello. Really kind of just helps you out. Oh, inspires here. Awesome. You had to deal with uh, tornado warnings. Oh, yeah. Oh, I hate tornadoes. I've lived in places with them. Yeah, that's... Not where they're super common, but... You know, Colorado gets a few tornadoes here and there. Yeah, I... I never wanted to live in a place where I would fear my house flying away one day. Right. Yeah, although I say that. I live in Earthquake Central, but we don't get as many earthquakes as people think. You know, when you, people think California, right. they think natural disaster, they think earthquake. But it doesn't happen as often. But we do get a lot of little, um, like, we get tiny earthquakes more often. And I hear it's a mixed bag. For the most part, I hear that tiny earthquakes are good if you get them periodically because it loosens the pressure and it's not building all, it's not building up. But little earthquakes are also known to set off big ones. So if there is a yeah. big one lurking, that little one could pop in, and that's what everybody fears when they fear when they feel that little bit of a, ooh, a 3.0. <laughs> right. Where's, the, where's that 10 coming? Yeah, the thing with earthquakes, in my brief experience with them, is that oh, I, my poly mesh is not 3D. Okay. Um, you. But yeah, my my brief experience with earthquakes was that. Um, they might happen relatively frequently, but the ones that actually cause any damage are so infrequent that it isn't really even worth worrying about as, unless you're like in construction or architecture, that kind of thing, anything to do with infrastructure, it's not really worth worrying about. Right. Um, whereas tornadoes, depending on where you live, you have to think about it every year because there's tornado season. I can see that. And tornadoes are more likely to cause damage every time, whereas an earthquake could just be a little shimmy. Yeah, I definitely get that. Uh, do I use anatomy for sculptors? I do use anatomy for sculptors. Um, the main points of these are to kind of showcase how to just grab some anatomy from the interwebs and yeah. utilize that. But yeah, I have that book. And I go through it periodically. I don't like using it for on-the-fly stream uh, references. I feel like that gets a little... Uh, I feel like that gets a little... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, you can get lost in that book. There's so much information. If I want to find mm -hmm. something very specific, I'm not quite there uh, with how to, like, get that information quickly. I'd have to, like, dig through it. You guys don't want me digging through it. <laughs> All right. I'm gonna go ahead and also, but I'm thinking what we're gonna end up doing. Oh, interesting. What the heck? It's kind of weird how literally every apocalyptic movie plays in a play. <laughs> yeah, absolutely right. Yeah. It is. It is pretty weird, man. So I downloaded all these uh, references, um, 
and I forgot to download them to my desktop too. I use Pure Ref so much, but what I wanted to do was actually download this guy right here. Save that out. Bring in the texture one more time, import, and get the bottom of the foot going as well. I just realized I haven't turned my music on. That's how uh, not awake I am right now. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> There we go. And then I can go ahead and uh, adjust this guy right here. And I'm going to make... What let... Ooh, shit. We started off good with this song. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to turn this up a little bit. And New York. Deadpool is correct. Okay, I'm going to do more research into this article and we'll get back to you. I skimmed, but I want to do a deep dive into this. It's relevant as a game dev. It is relevant as a game dev. Hopefully you guys can hear the music. Let me know if you can. Here's sometimes you guys can't. And I feel like a weirdo playing music. <laughs> I found it's interesting. Um, some people can hear it better than others. And it seems to be if they have their volume down just low enough, the music just doesn't get picked up. And it's like just one tick higher and all of a sudden they can hear the music. No, interesting. Slow B can hear it. I love this song, Slow B. You hadn't heard me say it a bunch of times. So. <laughs> Too damn loud. <laughs> That's okay. We'll be turning it down. It's one of those. Uh, I really just like the beginning of that song so much. There we go. And back down we go. Hi, Luna. <laughs> uh, she comes over and just. Ow! All right, I'm actually gonna go ahead and Z remesh this real quick and get this really, really low. I just asked Dr. A says, uh, do you guys love film? Do I love film? Like I movies? like movies. Do I like a film? Yes, I do like a film. <laughs> is, that what, is that what he means? I think so. What's your favorite What's your favorite go-to movie for Halloween? Halloween, probably Hocus Pocus. Yeah, that's a good one. Mine's Dracula. Bram Stoker's nice. Dracula. It's one of my I also, favorite. I love horror, so I have to watch a bunch of horror movies too. So like uh, Cabin in the Woods is a go-to. Yes. Um, yes, I am Deadpool. Uh, we both are. Heaven in the Woods is great, by the way. Mm-hmm. Also, uh, the first Hellraiser. Ooh, the first one is good. I like Hellraiser 3. It's more campy, I know, but mm -hmm. Hellraiser 3 has been really, really cool. Yeah, I don't know. That's one of my favorite ones. I'm not sure if I even remember 3. I think I've only seen it once. Mm, I've seen... Yeah, one many many times i've seen two a handful of times and then i think everything after that i've only seen once interesting yeah um three is good i have i like that one a lot also inspired wants to know who's watching the snyder cut today i haven't seen the justice league at all i haven't seen any of the recent dc movies neither have it's i probably actually. not me <laughs> it's definitely not me um yeah I, I, I'm just not a fan of DC movies at this current moment. I mean, I'm just not a fan of DC characters. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah, we, we've touched on this before, too. Yeah. Yeah. I, it, I think, I think DC characters, I think in the, I think they work better in the comics than in the movies, but I mean, also I also haven't seen a really good DC movie that I've like fallen in love with. Right, but we, we've we've chatted on this before, and I don't want to give Brian's fingers a. <laughs> <laughs> they are so bad, slow art says. They... Yeah, that's the thing. I just don't enjoy them, yeah, nearly as much as I would like to. That's the thing. I would love to see a really good DC movie. I mean, Wonder Woman, um, the first one comes really close. I do like that. Um, uh, which I'm gonna call it. Uh, I'm saving as I'm, as I can't type. 
Um, but uh, I don't know. I think Marvel just hits it. I think Marvel just knows how to hit it better. I think it for me, it always comes down to I feel like the script is lacking something. Um, Hi, Gabe Matthews. Also, uh, Citizen Mech, uh, no, my streams are not getting earlier. We actually, so since it's anatomy week, we've been starting at what is noon my time um, all week. Yeah. It's a, it's a special week. <laughs> what? I'll be back at my normal later time next week. <laughs> Martin says, what? DC characters are the best. Well, I, I'd say the, I, I don't know. I'm torn, man. I'm torn. DC characters, I think, I think DC characters lack humanity for them to work as a movie. I think mm -hmm. DC characters work best in their comic because of how it's written. But bad writing is bad writing. And I just don't think DC writers for the movie industry have good writing. I would say Spawn, the first movie, the first Spawn movie is better than any DC movie that is out there. And that movie is kind of like can't be <laughs> which is why i'm excited <laughs> for the new spawn movie um, hey thank you so much for the follow i really appreciate it 3d Citizen Mac, thank you for the hydrate also uh dr ray says halloween i don't have a movie but i'll play a series of horror games in the month uh -huh. i like finding um indie horror games to play like there's well, usually a good yeah. list on itch or something yeah I used to really I like when um, Slender Man first came out. I was really into that game. I like indie I, horror games. I never got into Slender Man myself. Um, jump stairs don't get me, so Slender Man was just kind of like, okay, it just suddenly got loud and annoying, and oh, I'm dead. <laughs> <laughs> No, I really like Slender Man. I thought it was pretty cool. Um, I think uh, I think the thing with uh, the game that was lacking was it was kind of repetitive. Mm. It wasn't like it wasn't a wasn't the best game, but it was it was good. It's it was like just something we all kind of needed. Um, there's one that like I've been watching uh, Mr. Sark lately and he plays a lot of games he's been playing one in particular that's um been like uh like a ghost hunter game but you have to try to find this ghost and if you don't uh basically you have to survive but mm. yeah it's a re it's really interesting it's a little hard to explain but um you're know, watching him you're like you're with a team and you try to just try to like kind of figure out what's going on with it and then you have to kind of guess the ghost before they kill you but you're on a time oh, limit, okay. I think. Yeah, it's it's intriguing a little bit. It's like the concept is pretty cool. Sounds a little bit like Phasmophobia. Maybe that's what it is. I'm not sure of the game name itself. I'm, yeah, I'm I haven't that, played though. Phasmophobia. Um, it's... I think it's an early access. It's super buggy. I love watching other people play it because it's, it's so buggy. Yeah. Oh, Citizen Mech just also said it uh, sounds like Phasmophobia. Oh, okay, that's probably what it is, yeah. Cool. Um. Um. No, that's really cool. Uh, let's see here. Uh, can't we all just love comics and characters? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, they should hire a DC cartoon movie writer. A lot of those are actually real well done. Okay, you know what? Actually, to that point, Sloby. Hold on. I have it. Hold on, I have, I have my favorite DC movie. All-time favorite DC movie. I'll watch this movie over and over and over again. I've owned it since I was 14. So <laughs> I'm going to go to full screen here real quick just so you guys can see it. This is my favorite DC movie of all time. And I have a DVD of it. Nice. <laughs> so if you guys have not seen Mask of the Phantasm, you absolutely should. And Mark Hamill's amazing in this movie. So as far as DC goes, I like Batman and most of his villains. I don't go out of my way for Batman. 
No. That's about it. <laughs> but I also keep forgetting that Watchmen is DC, and I love the Watchmen. Yeah. Uh, what exactly am I doing? I am. Uh, this is a Foot Anatomy Week, so um, me and my friend Kamara, uh, we are both uh, kind of doing our own. We're doing anatomy studies, so we've been doing. Uh, we did legs, hands, arms, and. Uh, what? What we're doing? Oh, wait, sorry, <laughs> I just drew a blank. We did hands, arms. We did um, legs, and now we're doing feet. Tomorrow we're doing face, but we're just doing anatomy studies for the week, as requested by a lot of uh, by a lot of followers. And also, too, it just helps us out as artists. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm using some of the new features within ZBrush to actually kind of get a block out quickly, so then I can get to the sculpting faster. And we're also talking about movies. Um, yes. The tools that I'm using, I'm actually using the balloon, the mesh balloon right now and to get a block out and i'm using anatomy uh i'm using anatomy images to kind of get those shapes in so i don't have to just speculate it with my calibrated eye <laughs> <laughs> susan mex is the uh, uh it, the real question in phasmophobia is what's scarier the ghosts or players player models freaking out um Honestly, the player models freaking out doesn't scare me at all. I, well, really, the game doesn't scare me at all in general, but the player models freaking out is hilarious, and I love it. I've never played the game, but I love watching other people play it, because it's just hilarious. Yeah. No, it's fun watching uh, other people play it. It's fun watching Mr. Uh, Mr. Stark play it. Um, I'm going to use the Move Infinite brush here, too, for a second. I find that to be a really useful brush. And blocking out also i uh i also used the mesh balloon to lay out my foot and now i'm snake hooking the toes out at the moment i'm actually um poly grouping the toes because i forgot to do that but... oh that makes sense all right i get a little bit more of this foot kind of pushed but yeah um mesh balloon yep that anime series opening brings all the nostalgia feels. It really does, yeah. But Martin's Spark Mask to be. <laughs> to be putting it all the time. See, back. Let's see, Martin said, uh, back then, Marvel movies were way better, in my opinion. For example, when Spider Man was played by Tobey Maguire in 2002, it was more, more serious than Tom Holland swinging around and constantly making jokes. Um, but Spider Man was supposed to be joke jokey jokes yeah like, spider-man was always the smart ass whippy kid i don't think toby mm -hmm. mcguire's character actually landed uh or nailed spider-man the way comic fans anticipated him he was good at what he did for the first one problem is yeah. is that it's that typical let's hire a 20 something year old guy to play a teenager and let's make it passable so he had to like nair is the hair off of his face <laughs> right not show he also that. he he wasn't buff enough he had to gain a whole bunch of muscle to fill out his suit right um, um but i mean i didn't think he did a bad job i actually liked what he did with it i just don't think yeah, it was a good I, enough fit the writers still struggled a bit with the early spider-mans i always say i feel like toby Maguire was a good peter parker Andrew Garfield was a good Spider-Man. Tom Holland is both. Yes, I agree. Yeah. Although, Spider-Man 3 does not exist in my opinion. FYI. <laughs> Except for that dance. That dance is pretty cool. <laughs> um, also, I play Stream Raiders on my channel for anybody who's new. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and, and drop that on there. Got a lurk and work, Cardi says. Wow, no worries. That's, that's the first for Cardi. She usually is able to just kind of <laughs> work and have it up, but. Yeah. I just noticed Gabe Matthews is quoting me saying, uh, I don't go out of my way for Batman. Yep. <laughs> I'm not really sure how else to word that. <laughs> I don't know how else to word that either. We lost people! They're yeah, gonna keep playing. Oh no! <laughs> it's okay. It's a mystery one, so it's totally fine. That's twice now that I haven't placed units and lost. Yeah, what the hell? <laughs> it's your fault. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my fault. Yep. 
and I'm pretty sure I posted it, but I'm going to repost it if you guys are interested in seeing the dual stream that's happening with Kamara and I, so you know I'm not just talking to myself. Right. You know. Dr. Ray says, what are you talking about, Ian? Spider-Man 3 is the best of all time. So many, <laughs> uh, or best of all of them, so many memes. Yeah, it's a, it was a great meme creator for sure. I'll not argue that, but, uh, you know. See, I don't Come even on. remember Spider-Man 3. <laughs> Oh, well, do yourself a favor and watch it. It exists now. Watch it. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. I mean, you know, it's... it's. Uh, how, do, how do I say this? My opinion of Spider-Man 3 is that they clearly were going to do something. They clearly had better... Um, they, had a, they had a direction. Maybe not better, but they mm. had a direction, right? Um, and all that's fine. But... At the end of the day, what ended up really happening was... Oh, I'm looking at this upside down. What ended up really happening was Marvel movies started getting better and Sony mm -hmm. couldn't keep up. with Because with, when did, when did, when did Spider-Man 3 come out? 2000, 2007? 2008? I'm going to look it up right now. I feel like it was before then. I think I was still in high school. Spider-Man 3 came out in 2007 okay maybe okay. that's why i don't remember if i would have been in college maybe i never saw it but but um in the works was iron man because iron man was the first mm -hmm. of the mcu and sony was just making movies to keep the marvel contract same with fox they were making movies to keep the marvel contract for those of you who don't know you know um in order to to keep your characters under the license of marvel you had to make a certain amount of movies in a certain amount of time, hence all the Fantastic Four, not so fantastic movies. Um, is that they just they were just making the movies to make the movies? Well, when Spider-Man Three was coming out, that was an example of like, well, we have a series, let's just make the movie, let's do it. But then after that movie came Iron Man. And Iron Man set the stage for something better, in my opinion. And it really showcased what a good movie could be. <laughs> a good comic <laughs> book movie could be. Um, and now... So, to so Vorticity, uh, we are working on feet. This is IR Sculpts that you're hearing, and I just posted the link. <laughs> yep. It's Anatomy Week, and today's foot day. Today's foot day. Yep. So, um, but I mean, to, to be fair, one of my favorite Marvel movies of all time that started the whole series off is Blade, the first mm -hmm. one. Although I love Blade Trinity for just Ryan Reynolds. Ryan Reynolds. And also, <laughs> um, uh, oh my god, what's her name? What is her name? It's gonna drive me nuts. She's an amazing actress. Not Jessica, the, the, she played a vampire. Oh my god, it's gonna drive me nuts. I have no idea. <laughs> I'm just gonna look it up real quick. I have a terrible memory. Me too. I can't remember. Um, uh, blah, 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 blah. Parky, uh, Parker Posey. She's awesome. I fucking love her. <laughs> I also Hi, think I'm the Dark I also think the Dark Knight uh, also made a big deal as well in the superhero movies. It did, actually. The Dark Knight set the stage for DC to really make movies. Um, unfortunately, I just don't think anybody can live up to what what the Dark Knight brought to the table. Like, I mean, Batman Begins, fantastic movie. The Dark Knight, amazing movie. Um, Dark Knight Rises kind of fell short, in my opinion. <laughs> There's a lot wrong with that movie. The Battle um, of the Silly Voices. The best part about that movie is, uh, yeah, the voices. Um, oh. Yeah, Susan I think Max says all I can think about is smelly feet at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. And then uh, vorticity, yeah. So we've actually been having. He he said, uh, I guess if artists struggle with hands, they probably struggle even more with feet. Um, I don't know if I would say more because I haven't had to make feet but it's definitely as we're crediting Sloby Art with saying feet are just uglier hands 
<laughs> yeah, I can't remember who actually said it. Yeah. It sounds like a slow and VR then, thing uh, to say. Yeah. Um, and then MJ Sculp said, uh, so by the end of this, you guys should have a whole clan of feet or a foot clan. And by the way, that just reminded me, I was telling somebody else this story the other day, and I don't think they believe me, but Vorticity can back me up because that's my brother. Okay. Um, my first word was cowabunga. Nice. As it rightfully should be. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. Slobby Art says no. <laughs> it's a it's a temporary one. It's a temporary MJ, uh, credit. <laughs> MJ Sculpt says Snyder Cut is awesome. Totally blows the thre th theatrical cut out of the water. Um, I haven't seen the theatrical cut. I wouldn't be able to compare. I I hope it's awesome. Yeah. Look, I saw Batman v Superman, and it was okay. I mean, yeah. okay, you know, like, if there's ever another Batman reboot, can we not tell? Well, first off, let's stop rebooting Batman. Um, <laughs> like, and, j and my, this is my same complaint with Spider-Man, too. Right. We don't need to keep telling the origin story every single time. Like, Yeah, it's a, how it's many times can Uncle Ben die? Right. So, I mean, you, why it's important to know the origin story when you're doing a Batman movie, I really feel like Gotham did a really good job with kind of covering that. And then, you know, I mean, yeah, we, you just don't always need to go over it. You kind of, I mean, we kind of know at this point. And I think uh, Batman v Superman, they, they did a pretty good job with it, but it just was a slow movie. It was very slow. Mm. And I wish it was so I just I, I have never had interest in Superman. And, you know, I'm sure he's a cool character. I'm sure people really like him. Well, I know people really like him. I just personally have not had any interest in watching anything Superman. Yeah, super, uh, Superman kind of bores me a little bit. Uh, Still be art <laughs> couldn't understand Bane at all. Yeah, neither. I don't think anybody really could. <laughs> Um, the Stunts in the Dark Knight movies were crazy. Yeah, the, the Stunts in the Dark Knight movies were awesome, Dr. A. It really was. Yeah, um, Paddington, Batman, Incoming. I'm, I'm excited for it, but not overly excited. I want it to be really good. It can be really good. It's all about writing to me. And that's where I think DC falls short. It's not about mm -hmm. the characters or what... Or, or it's not even really about, like what they've done right or wrong in the past it's just literally like i don't think they're hiring good writers right so you were gonna say something oh uh mj sculpt said zack snyder never saw the theatrical cut either his wife wouldn't allow it really uh Vorticity also said uh maybe it makes it easier since you can make the feet as ugly as you want um for me personally, feet are easier than hands because I don't usually have to make them. <laughs> but feet also, you don't see them as often, so hands tend to be the hardest for most people because they, they're they right in front of your face all the time. You know what hands look like. Yeah. But feet are ugly. I have really ugly feet. Like, there's, um, there's no helping me there, so... <laughs> <laughs> I was going to show off a really fun little uh, tip that um, I use myself, um, which is if you guys save out your sub tools and then you go into a uh, project and then I believe it is under, blah, 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 blah. I've done this twice now where I like I lost my place. Um, I think it's under miscellaneous. I can't remember. Nope, not miscellaneous. There is... Come on. Oh, it might be under tools, actually. Go under tool. Yeah. So if you go to the light box and go under tool, Ryan Kingsley, there is a ecroche built into ZBrush. Mm. And the best part about the ecroche is that it has a complete skeletal structure. And if you go ahead and load this up and hit auto groups and kind of select lasso the feet and get the, the foot that you need you can go ahead and split head in then you can copy this and bring it into your model go ahead and paste it 
and it looks like it's pretty small. So I'm going to go ahead and go to Deformation, Unify. And we'll scale this down. Where is... Oh, oh. okay. There we go. So you can scale this and then turn on transparency. And you can go ahead and actually place the bones into your foot. And then you can actually kind of get that shape going. So you can get the proper bone placement. Mm -hmm. Then kind of get it pointed the same way. So that way it's similar. But this way, now you can actually get... Because the thing I think that most people get wrong in the feet, and by most people I mean me, uh, <laughs> <laughs> is that, uh, you know, there's definitely... Um, I'm going to widen this out a little bit. There's definitely... Land there's a lot of landmarks that can occur in the foot itself. Yeah. So... You want to get those landmarks right. You can line up the toes and stuff like that. And then now, so like the ankles, there's a, there's two parts of the foot that kind of come in that give you a high spot and a low spot. Now we can manipulate this to get those ankle bones in there and get all the proper uh, shape of the foot in there. It also helps with the heel, in my opinion. Ninja sculpts says, I spent a good amount of time yesterday just sculpting the hands of my Bizarro sculpt. So many holds and wrinkles. Sounds about right. <laughs> yep. That Bizarro's yeah. looking awesome, by the way. Um, also, if you want to see some of the best hand sculpts and dynamic pose sketches in 3D, then you should check out Pablo, per Pablo Perdomo on ArtStation. Mmm, nice. I think he's a traditional sculptor, right? Uh, do I know how to play an it instrument? I do. I actually have played um i've actually played uh drums for about six years and then i did i could play the guitar but um i would say i could only play like melodies i couldn't actually like get into guitar playing so much um very 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 different uh experience it wasn't that good with it <laughs> this is cheating! No, no, no. It's working smarter, not harder. I just pulled up Pablo Perdomo. Uh, assuming this is the right one, there were three of them. But There were three of the same guy? What? Yeah. Well, it's three with the same name. Three yeah. artists. No, oh, interesting. Um, yeah, he has a really interesting, like, it looks like he probably started as a traditional sculptor. It looks very. Let me. Sculptural. I can't see what you're saying. Maybe good. you can Discord the link. Hi, Brandy. Hi, Brandy. <laughs> Remember, my biggest tip is always to tell people uh, don't reinvent the wheel, but when you're doing a study, get landmarks and you don't have to build everything from scratch every time so I don't need to build the skeletal structure every time but it is good if you want to use it as a guide mm -hmm. at the end of the day you're still doing the work so yeah What's interesting, too, is actually taking a look at my foot. Um, I, could tell you, I could tell you guys right now, this bone right here, this bone I've broken in my foot. And I've also broken a couple toes. <laughs> so very, very okay, fun. Fine. You can come up. Hey, greetings, the Painted Dragon. Really enjoying your live uh, sessions and love the ZBrush Live that you did the other day. Thank you so much for sharing. Absolutely, man. So, so, so glad 
that you enjoyed it and i love having you there man uh then just get a body <laughs> <I'm trying. laughs> no such thing as cheating when creating art exactly right <laughs> all right hey brandy no it's a difference between using something as a tool to give you a visual and then relying on that tool like i tell people like you know I've used base meshes a hundred times, um, and I don't. And I think base mesh, uh, using a base mesh to create your this, uh, starting point for your art is perfect. What I tell people is, you need to study anatomy, and when you choose to study anatomy, um, in the beginning, it's more important to block it out yourself and try mm -hmm. to create it. But after a while, you start learning how to utilize certain assets and tools. And if they give it to you, utilize it, you know? Um, in traditional sculpting, you know, they show you how to constantly reference other things um, using other tools like calibers to get measurements. So, you know, use the tools that you have to your advantage, um, you know, as long as you're getting something out of that lesson. That's the, that's the more important um, part of the study, in my opinion. It's really just learning to use those tools you know, I'm not relying on it. I'm just utilizing it for that shape placement just to ensure that it's looking right. But I still got to sculpt the rest. And and so, yeah, that's my thought. That's my thought on it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but you know, yeah, it's, I, it's I always I always feel like, um, you know, you got to you got to study anatomy. You can't use a base mesh and get the anatomy right because a base mesh isn't going to have perfect anatomy every time. Right. Especially when you're trying to adapt it to a different shaped character. Um, but it's like if you make your own base mesh, you're going to want to update it over time because you're going to get better at anatomy, hopefully. Keep studying it. That's the um, idea. It's so like you're not going to want to keep using the same base mesh over and over and over and over forever. Yep. No, it, so absolutely. So these days, uh, I just checked out MJ's Insta, the Ron Swanson's awesome. And MJ said, thanks, I'm working on revamping all my socials and portfolio work, so hopefully we'll have new stuff soon. Ooh. Exactly. Yeah, new stuff. <laughs> yeah, I'm also in the process of doing all of that. <laughs> Deadpool, I, I love your comments. Dude. If I reinvent the wheel, just get that body that's already made. Yeah, why, why not? <laughs> Environment is a lot of uh, work smart and art hard. You can reuse a lot of your assets to create that project. Martin says, absolutely. Well, mm -hmm. and that's the perk too with digital art. You know, um, if you've made a hand and then you're making another character that has a hand, why rebuild the hand from scratch every time? Yeah. What purpose does that serve you? Um, Especially if you're working in an industry, like if you have a job, you're getting paid to do this, you're on a timeline. Right. So, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Kitty don't gone. Beat up. Back to my foot. I like your leg video because it shows the muscles. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there's not a whole lot of muscles here, but we're definitely going to be putting in some of the muscles. Uh, tendons because on the feet at least on my feet. I have skinny feet. You definitely see the bones and stuff like that so I'm gonna be utilizing some of that to To kind of get some of that placement correctly Hopefully That's the plan This is also like My third foot I've ever made I'm pretty sure it's my first human foot. You think it's your first human foot? Yep I've sculpted the Hulk before. Um, not my best work, because it was like a year ago. But his feet were pretty gnarly. I was pretty happy with that. I did... So I did base meshes for a game I was kind of volunteering for a couple years ago. Mm -hmm. Male and female. And I'm pretty sure we just gave them like triangle superhero suit feet because you're never going to see their feet. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, bones and tendon. Third foot. Another foot ever. Oh my god, newbie. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, man. 
Can't be, uh, <laughs> you know, can't be wasting my time doing feet all the time. All right. So now that we got something like this, I'm actually going to, I'm going to try something here. I think I'm going to kind of space the toes a little bit so I can weld this together. Put some nail polish spacers in there. Right. I gave this guy a large ass pinky toe. My pinky is not even this big. <laughs> so I'm gonna drop that down a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I wanna space it like that so I can stitch this together. So I'm actually gonna duplicate it. I'm going to res it up a few. And then I'm gonna delete lower. And then I'm just gonna rely on uh, plug in from ZBrush Dynamesh Utility or Dynamesh Master. They're kind of the same difference. I'm going to go zero blur and I'm going to do it at like 0.25, which gives me about 250,000. And that should stitch that together fairly well. And then I can kind of just blend that in with a smooth and trim. And I can start kind of carving away. I, instead of using the Ecrochet Skeleton underneath, which I think that's a really cool method and I'm going to have to try it, but I'm not right now, um, I'm just doing my, putting ZBrush in see-through mode. Yeah, do it. I'm using some of my references. <clears throat> yeah, I told myself I was going to try a new technique every day. Mm -hmm. Or at least add some sort of variation yeah uh of of the set technique and this this was one of them where it's like yeah i'm gonna go ahead and kind of set something up so that uh you know see if it works it may not work i think this is working out pretty well though okay yeah i wanted to try something a little different every day but since i've never made a foot before as far as i know <laughs> You're relying on doing that. my tried and true. Relying on instinct. Yep. I will be still utilizing the because um, I really love it. The mesh, the mesh project. Mm -hmm. To kind of put some of the other muscle placements in. But yeah. I don't know. So speaking of anatomy, um, last night from my uh, mentorship, we okay. were going over some, we've been doing an anatomy study for this month mm -hmm. and um, we we're doing group critiques last night mm -hmm. and I have not finished mine. So you. yep. <laughs> I've been more focused on the beetle because that's, I mean, I'm also working on that for the mentorship. Um, but yeah, I haven't finished my anatomy guy. We still have, we're working on secondary shapes right now. Um, secondary Thanks, shapes are, we're supposed to have those done by next Wednesday. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm still working on primary shapes because I just haven't gotten to that yet. I keep putting it off while I work on the beetle. Um, but oh man, I sent Anna my uh, Z tool last night. She pulled it up, mm -hmm. and I forgot which sub tool it was because I hadn't looked at it in a few days. And she was looking at I guess the wrong one because <laughs> she didn't realize there was more than one. And I was just sitting there going, ah, "Okay, yep, this is awful." <laughs> <laughs> It's like yeah. I, I'm pretty sure I already know everything you're gonna say. This is just god awful, and she's just giving me good critique. But at the same time, I'm just like, I feel bad for even sending this because I already know all of this. <laughs> yep. Yeah, that's pretty funny. Oh, Ryan just commented. Though you may have never sculpted a foot before, you have sculpted from reference, following form. When creating a character, you always are creating that character for the first time. 
Ooh, chopping exactly. in hot with that knowledge. That is a very good point. Just clip that. That's awesome. That's a, that's always a great perspective. Yeah. Yep. And that's why so, too, you know, you, you you don't always get it right. You know, there's so many. That times actually that... reminded me. I've had I had a professor in grad school who used to say that a, a hand or a foot is basically a character in and of itself. Yep. It is. It's true. <laughs> it is deep. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. Yeah. It's um, characters it, again because I think with uh, I'd say more you can do a lot with a foot. Don't get me wrong. You can mm -hmm. pose a foot all crazy. I've seen some beautiful sculpts of feet that just look insane. But I think a hand because it naturally can move a little bit more. Um, because it has more range of motion you can i think hands are a little bit more expressive as its own character um uh, than uh than i would say feet are but they're they're, they're both kind of very similar in that same regard too so mm -hmm. all right i hit i don't like how long his toes are so i'm gonna push that back <laughs> Kind of push that back a little bit and then i'm gonna go ahead and dynamesh it again yeah it's not just facts <laughs> no ryan it's deep <laughs> <laughs> facts can be deep yeah man absolutely no oh. No, but I think you I think you should always treat each sculpt as if it's the first time you're really going going for it. Mm -hmm. But I also think people don't need to judge themselves harshly on, you know, how uh, how to start something, you know, just start. Yeah, it. it's OK to just get in there and just start blocking out. Biggest tip for learning anything is to just do it. And then, mm -hmm. you know, if it. Uh, if you find that you're struggling, then kind of look at the thing that you're struggling with and then see if there's a way to then kind of maybe move, you know, learn a new technique or how to how to kind of push through and just see if it's if there's something else maybe you're missing, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So. OK, one of my favorite things to say when uh, if somebody's having a hard time getting started on a new project or something. Mm -hmm. um, the only thing, so uh, it, it depends on which end of the project they're on because it kind of changes your perspective on things. But if you're about to finish something, it's uh, the only thing harder than starting a project is finishing it. Yeah. But if you're about to start a project, the only thing harder than finishing a project is starting it. I agree. I'm actually... Uh... I have a ton of projects that I've never finished, and I definitely want to go back and try to do so. I actually don't have as many unfinished projects as I feel like I do, but I have a lot of collected references and concept images and such that I've never done anything with. Hmm, interesting. I have a whole folder of hundreds of concept art that, like, I've even gotten permission from the artist to see if they're willing to let me make it a model and use it in my portfolio and all that and they're all just sitting there and I've never touched them but I also used to work way too many hours biggest didn't have tip. time to do any sculpting yeah biggest tip learn anatomy absolutely and that doesn't go for that doesn't just go for humans everything mm -hmm. has anatomy I just watched a video the other day. It was a, um, I think Zebra shared it. It was for, it was a Disney breakdown, but they were talking about design and character um, uh, evolutions. And they were talking about flow of a tree. And if you look at the leaf, the stem of the leaf is the exact same flow as the branches, which is also the exact same flow of the tree itself. So if you design a leaf and you design it with those little, you know, and you have the, the stems coming through and branching out, you've just designed the branch that holds that leaf 
and you've just designed the tree that holds that. And that is amazing. And so it's like when you look at anything from the construction of a keyboard to a human body to a tree to, you know, anything, it all has an anatomy to it. It all has structure. And that structure you just have to learn if you want to recreate that thing. I just noticed I completely ignored. I got a follow. Thank you for the follow, 3D aficionado. <laughs> We got Scream Raiders. Yeah, Disney is stylized and Disney is beautiful, but they still ground their stuff in reality. Um, and it's 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 amazing what they can do. <laughs> but yeah, so yeah, yeah learn anatomy. Like how they um, how they did light testing and things like that for uh, I think it was Alice in Wonderland. They actually had an actress come in and put on a dress with an apron and all that, and they would put her in different scenarios with different lighting, so they had that for reference. Oh, wow. There you go. Ooh, thank you, thank you. But it is looking pretty decent. We're just getting started. Uh, that was Cardi and Sloby who won that, by the way. Good job, guys. All right, let's put that there. I just all realized right. I don't have my reference behind my seabrush, and I'm still sculpting in see-through. <laughs> <laughs> Brain's not yet. Brain has not woken up yet. That's nah, okay. All right. Well, what I got going on now is um, I went ahead and polygrouped my foot so that I have some sort of uh, some sort of way to Z remesh it without welding it all together. So and I duplicated it. Now I'm going to go to geometry. I'm going to go to Z remesher. Keep groups keep this at like a five and then actually before I do that I'm gonna zoom in because we have really ugly topology let's go to deformation polished by features that's really gonna clean up all those groups and get cleaner topology when doing that and then we're gonna go ahead geometry Z remesher Z remesh groups it's also gonna kind of help us do everything we can even Paul Gabriel crease it if we wanted to but <laughs> I don't think that's necessary. Hey, NHA, hey, hope as well. Hey, Happy Extruder, thanks for talking by, dude. Usually I'm not really into stylized, but Disney and, and also Pixar are really special. They really are, yeah. Mm -hmm. They really hit the mark and capitalized on on a certain look, and I think it's I think it's great what they've done and what they could do. And so, um, also too, pointing out the reason why I did that is if you look at the edge flow of my foot now, it is a lot cleaner with just Z remesh, um, I wouldn't say, you know, it's great, but I would say it's pretty good so that I'm not gonna be fighting topology as I'm moving forward. And then I can also select the toe and kind of uh, start manipulating them a bit more individually, which is awesome. Meanwhile, I am still in Dynamesh. I'm just doing a bunch of sculpty sculpting. <laughs> Sculpty, sculpty, sculpty. I think I've developed more of a technical <laughs> way of doing things. Yeah. Uh, Which, honestly, I think I have too, but I'm trying to do things a little bit differently. Despite saying, oh, I haven't done a photo, I'm doing it the way I know. I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm going back to old habits, I should say. Yeah, you are. Not, not better <laughs> or worse, but older. Because, um, yeah, the Beatle has taught me a lot of the technical stuff. Right? Yeah. Uh, Ryan says, so I keep hearing the learn anatomy over and over, which which to so many uh, daunting. I've never told my students to study anatomy. I tell them, look at physics to move. Something has to push or pull. Um, it's an interesting take. Um, I think that might apply more for animation. In, in my in my opinion I, I would say that lesson applies more for animation but and while that helps because there is an aspect to that as well that we definitely need to like you you know uh, especially in statue making for example like i make things that are one-off statues they're not designed to move so i need to learn physics i need to learn how something transpires and and bends to get the right expression in the piece but if i don't know anatomy then I might have a harder time figuring out how that muscle moves or how that thing is designed to move in order to get it right. 
Um, but again, I also think that append that depends on the style in which you're you're doing stuff to a point. Even stylized sculpting has anatomy built into it. Um, and I feel like the more anatomy you know, the easier it will be to uh, to get those things right the first time. Anatomy is daunting. Um, mm -hmm. There's no question about that. But I, I definitely think it is important to, to not minimize the power of... Not that you are. I'm not saying that you are, right? I'm just saying I, I think it is important to not minimize or to not... Um, downgrade what anatomy could bring to the table. Yeah, I think even uh, studying human anatomy and trying to figure out how the bones fit together, how the joints work, how the muscles flow over the bones, how everything fits together, how everything moves, helps with trying to understand the engineering of like the beetle I've been working on. Um, when I'm looking at his joints and trying to figure out like what parts move, what parts are static, what parts need to fit inside of other things. Um, right. I think if I hadn't studied anatomy as much as I have, I might not have been asking the right questions. That makes sense, yeah. It's actually studying the same, but it's less daunting in perspective. Yeah, okay, I could see that. And that, and that might work for some. For me, mm. I definitely needed to... I definitely needed to see how certain things work everybody learns differently that's one thing mm -hmm. i learned early on in my uh high school career uh, if i had like i said before if i if i had youtube back when uh, i was in high school i would have been a straight a student because getting information from one teacher and then going to another they have different ways of explaining things and they're limited right on what you can do and if you don't know how to research something that makes it harder Anatomy is such a big open-ended conversation and people automatically go to, oh, I need to know medical anatomy. No, 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 you don't. Like, you know, you need to at least understand the basic forms of what it is. But I think too, some people might take it a little too far and say, you need to know every name of the anatomy. Right. <laughs> And I am you need like, to know the no, names of every single muscle, and you need to that. know the shape and like exactly what each muscle looks like and where it attaches to the skeleton, including all the deep muscles. Right. I know some names, like I know <laughs> phalanges and and, and right. gluteus maximus, but yeah, I, I think there are. I, I think there's extremists on both sides, but I think it is equally important to at least cover the basics of it. But to make it fun and to make it engaging is the trick. And I think as a mm -hmm. teacher that's really where it makes or breaks um, somebody absorbing that knowledge. So, it, you know, I mean, teaching is not easy. And right. anybody says so. I've done so, a little bit of it. It's, <laughs> it's either not done it or, yeah. So if somebody says teaching is easy, they either haven't done it, A, or B, they're just so good at it, but they don't really understand how they're good at it, which I've right. met some of those people. Um, the most difficult thing when I'm sculpting is fighting all the characters that want to manifest itself into a current sculpt. When you have a brain full of prior references, doesn't help. Right, and that's why I say reference, reference, reference. You know, especially if I'm creating something from scratch that I want it to be my own, like the sea monster you guys are watching me do on Pixo. Um, I have like a ton of different things and I'm pulling inspiration from all of it, including poses. So, you know, reference those things to keep it as as near and dear to you and original as possible, but nothing's original anymore. So, mm -hmm. you know, I, I believe if you rely solely on memory, you're going to cater yourself to one specific style um, instead of branching out. Yeah, medical anatomy gets confusing. Even I don't go down that rabbit hole. I actually asked my teacher Shane about um, that when I was first starting it. And he was like, no, don't do that. But then that's when he gave me an anatomy for sculptors. And he was like, you know, check this book out. And it's a great way where it gets all the basic forms, shapes in. Um, you're still learning the anatomy, which is imperative. But it's in a way that's like, here's what you need to sculpt. It really only what you need right. to sculpt. I sculpted too many muscles on my leg. All the fancy names and... Yeah, exactly, right? <laughs> the one um I would say not not common muscle name that I always remember 
is the sternocleidomastoid. And it's just because it was fun to say. And it's the one that runs from the back of your jaw down to the front of your sternum. Ooh, that's fun. Uh, yeah, I I don't yeah, I'm I don't know half of those fancy medical terms. You, be, you beat me there. <laughs> yeah, I know, you know. Deltoids, bicep, tricep, trapezius, latissimus well, dorsi. Yeah, I know the basic ones like you're saying. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I know what a bicep is. And then there's the, the sternocleidomastoid, but I've also heard it called the sternocleidomastoideus, which makes it even better. <laughs> I guess that really just depends on uh yeah, on who's teaching who's teaching yeah. it. Yeah. That's okay, I just learned how to say Uranus. I was saying Uranus for a long time when referring to the planet, so, you know. I think Uranus is proper, but... It's proper, yeah. It's, yeah, it's but. it's accepted, at least. Um, I've actually... There's a <laughs> game streamer that I follow that... Um, Recently, his chat has been full of people arguing about whether it's pronounced emu or emu. Oh, God. Gif or gif. Just say what you want to say. <laughs> right. Well, that argument, uh, emu or emu, depends entirely on where you live. That makes sense. Because in America, it's emu. In Britain and uh, Australia, it's emu. Hmm, interesting. And then they're like, well, if they say emu in Australia, that's proper. It's like, no, that's... <laughs> <sighs> yeah, and I, yeah, I guess it just... I guess it really just depends, too, on, like, you know, what it is. You know, English language evolves mm -hmm. all the time, and I'm not exactly. one to speak on it, so I just say, you know... Yeah, try to learn the proper pronunciation, but there's proper ways... There's all the sorts of ways to say it, so... Mm -hmm. Yeah, who, who knows, man? Who knows? Yeah, and <laughs> we've looked up the proper pronunciation of that bird's name, and linguists have agreed that in America, emu is proper. Well, there you go. So people go. can stop arguing, but they keep arguing. Uh, yep, reference. Because of course they do. Yeah. Um, let's see. Yeah, re reference, 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 absolutely. Mm -hmm. And Martin said, you need a doctor title to become a character artist. Yeah. <laughs> it, I don't think it would hurt. Um, it, right. <laughs> although I, I've said it before, actually, in studying anatomy more in depth and then getting into fitness more, the two kind of correlate, which is nice. Um, let's see, uh, Ryan says, so yes. first remember, I'm a game dev. That's what I teach, so everything is rooted in the physics. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, that's why also, Ryan, I'd said it kind of made sense more for for animation stuff. And, the, and you're right. In the, I'm not saying the way you teach it is wrong. The way you teach it, if it works for that student, that's perfect, you know? Mm -hmm. So I'm definitely not saying that. Uh, but and yeah, I, as far as, like, every student learns differently, you say you would have done better in high school if YouTube had been a thing. Yeah. My issue in high school was that I learned everything the first time the teacher said it, it would just be ingrained in my brain, which is crazy now because I have a terrible memory, but I could recall how it sounded when they said it. And mm. I, I still have that. Like if somebody says something out loud, I can remember how it sounds. Um, okay. But I never did homework. Interesting. So I, I think I turned in maybe two homework assignments the whole way through high school and I had straight B's. Oh, interesting. <laughs> well, you know, hey, there, so, there you go. So YouTube wouldn't have helped me. No. I didn't understand what studying was until I was a junior in college. <laughs> I was like, you mean people read the textbook? Wait, that's a thing? What? Yeah, that's pretty but funny. It doesn't just sit on your shelf and look pretty? Nope, guess not. Yeah. <laughs> uh, as you look at it that way, you never have to worry about what's active. No, that makes sense. Okay, yeah, Ryan says further, uh, but if you simply put it down... One muscle pulls the forearm up, one pulls the back down. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Yeah. No, yeah, if you look at the physics, that makes more sense. Absolutely. There needs to be a common reference of names. <laughs> yeah. Let's see here. Um, there's a town in Tennessee called Santa Fe. They pronounce it Santa Fe, and it makes me want to die inside. Oh, wait, weird. Yeah. Wait, they pronounce it Santa Fe? What? Yeah, he put a second E on there, so I'm assuming that's what he meant. Huh. Yeah. The old stone sculpts 
were great. They also sculpted the form that was present. That was present. Yep, yeah, absolutely. A lot of lots of sculpts seem cookie cutter when something different comes along. It seems unique. And this is very true. Yeah. Dumbing it down makes one dumb. <laughs> Um, as far as the Santa Fe, Tennessee, Ugh. God, that sounds so bad. Um, <laughs> that's, that's horrific. Yeah. So I lived in a town in California called Vallejo, mm -hmm. and the way it's spelled, it should be either if you're pronouncing it like an American would, it would be Vallejo. If you're pronouncing <laughs> it like it would be in Spanish, it would be Vallejo. What? But no, they call it Vallejo. Interesting. And it's not Vallejo, it's Vallejo. Yeah. So, real quick, just so people are like kind of see, seeing my train of thought too, I did use the uh, mesh, the mesh project to get these shapes in there. Um, and now I'm thinking like that's doing double the work. So I'm actually gonna just use them as reference at this point to then. Um, just use the standard brush and get those bone shapes in there. Ooh, so I get something more brush. like that. Yeah. Actually, the standard brush is great. So I'm gonna actually going to apply the subdivisions on it. And what I'm going to do is um, start drawing and then hold shift. Because now this red line actually goes all the way through like it's supposed to. Um, before, when you would hold shift and drag a straight line and let it go, it actually stopped short of the brush. But... Now, yeah, notice that. Now it goes all the way through, which is awesome. So I can <gasps> come does. here and I can e oh get God. exactly where I want it to be. And then that way I can I, use these as guides to kind of. I always had point. to draw the lines out like eight times just to get the length right. Oh my God, that makes me so happy. Yeah, no, they, they, did fo they focused on that. So now I have this here that I can utilize and then I can kind of smooth that down a little bit. And get that shape in there so a little bit of a different approach but i already did these nice nice quote um z remesh so that if i wanted uvs you know or i just wanted clean topology that's a way to go about doing it but i don't want to re-merge it and all that stuff so now i can just kind of get that marking in with the standard brush i use the standard brush a lot too for bone um like for bone, uh, the bone, the bony look. Mm -hmm. It's the, I think it's a great brush for it. I honestly don't remember the last time I've legit used the standard brush. Yeah. It's kind of become like red wax to me. <laughs> okay, yeah. okay, hold on. Uh, Death says uh, in Oklahoma, they have a town called Miami that they pronounce. Miami. Yeah. <laughs> okay. There's some, there are some interesting pronunciations that. in Pennsylvania. I can't think what any of them are off the top of my head, but they might come to me. Yeah. I mean, you know, I'm not an English major. I'm, right. I'm barely good at it. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, Miami shouldn't be Miami. It should be Miami. I guess, yeah. Well, don't, don't they... pronouncing it with the original language in mind. Yeah, I've heard it with more of a inflection, you know, like, uh, um, like when I hear, um, Spanish, uh, Spanish speakers say Miami. Yeah. They go like, uh, I, f I don't want to butcher it, but it's like, yeah, Miami, like, like they really emphasize it. They like stretch a few of the... Mm-hmm the syllables i mean that's a, that's just a testament to how language can change ever so slightly remember there was a will smith song miami and he he was saying <laughs> yeah, uh yeah. welcome to miami and then there's a female voice in the background bienvenido a miami yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> yep uh, what a throwback <laughs> <laughs> You could always ask for feed pics, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure. If you don't practice enough, yeah. Um, oh, hold on, what are we talking about here? Let's go back. Then I got recommendation on a YouTube video called Why You're So Bad At 
anatomy. I don't like it. <laughs> yeah, you just gotta. You just YouTube gotta knows. <laughs> you just gotta put in those hours, man. Put in those hours and don't be afraid to fail. You know. Right. Um, and I know that's the reason sounds... I really like doing the speed sculpts because it's easy to not be afraid to fail when you know you only have three hours to work on the thing. Yeah. Because it's like just get something done, and then if it's bad, well, I only wasted three hours. Right. Exactly. I think where speed sculpting ends up hurting you over the long run is um, not being able to put in the time to invest uh, the, the, the time you need to invest to make it right. I think speed sculpting is a great construction or a great um, way of, of practicing concept mm -hmm. uh, concept sculpting and concept ideas. But um, for, for me, it's been good for practicing confidence and just like just going yeah. for it. And I think that's great. You know what I mean? I think that's a really good way to do it. I just think that it has its place. And it does. a thing I made a mistake on when I was early sculpting and trying to get into it was, you know, oh, I need to get this thing done now. Like I, you mm -hmm. know, I need, I, I watched speed sculpts and was actually like, oh, oh, this only takes, this only takes them like a few hours. And then I'd be working right. on something. I'm like, I'm eight hours in and it's nowhere near as pretty as this guy. Like, mm -hmm. um, so I, I think I feel that like... was definitely one benefit that I don't always think about when it comes to having gone to grad school. Because um, mm -hmm. for people who don't know, I went to undergrad for zoology, but my grad school was for uh, game design, 3D modeling. So yeah, I don't always fully appreciate all the things I did actually get out of that grad school because they were trying to get more money out of me. But um yeah, just like being around other students and seeing how long things take for a student to make. Yeah. Ooh, lunch, Deadpool. Lunch, Deadpool's eating. Yeah. Fail faster, Ryan says. Sorry. Yeah. Go, <laughs> Go ahead, continue your thoughts. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. <laughs> oh, no, that was the end of my thought. <laughs> but also, yes, fail faster. If you If you fail faster and more frequently, you'll start failing less. Yeah. Yeah. I, that's that's actually why um, I don't mind doing it every once in a while, but the people that I see doing it a lot right now, um, I see a lot of people who shouldn't, in my opinion, be doing it as much. They should be practicing more of like the the design elements of a sculpt, the mm -hmm. storytelling of a sculpt, you know, because essentially like speed sculpting that way, it puts you more on put you more in my world where it's like take something it's a one-time shot all the way to as to finish as fast as you can go right and when i first was practicing for the speed sculpt the sculpt off for pixo last year um i saw exactly where all my failures were and i had to try to push through that and then once i did the contest and I think I did fairly well. I mean, I didn't place, but some of the, the sculpt that got fifth place, I thought my sculpt was pretty on par with him. So I was like happy to see the quality there. But I was like, I need up my game if I want to actually try to win this thing if I get another opportunity. So hey, thank you so much for the follow, Mavman. Oh, Citizen Matt Mavman just out and you. said he, uh, he was Lurk. out eating Good. dinner and didn't hear what we were talking about. Uh, for the confidence boosting and going for it. We were talking about speed sculpting, if you hadn't picked that up already. Um, Slow B, go get your, is gonna go get uh, uh, their first COVID shot. Good luck. Good luck, Slow nice. B. Yeah, um, if speed sculpting was the only thing I had time for right now, or I should rephrase, if I only had a few hours a week to work on art, speed sculpting would not be my first choice yeah i agree but since i do have kind of all the time in the world right now and i'm basically doing art like 12 to 16 hours a day three hours a week doing a speed sculpt is super helpful for me yep no again yeah i, th I think people just need to put it in the proper box that, that's right my point. like yeah exactly yeah totally agreeing with you <laughs> My poop emoji just sold for twenty four eighty eight. I call it a POS. Holy shit! Nice. <laughs> how how sculpting is learned? Slow sculpting is, is learned. Is it just sculpt. me, 
Yeah. Is it just me or does the name Happy Extruder saying that just make it that much better? It makes it, yeah, that, yeah, it definitely Happy helps. Happy Extruder made a poop emoji. Yay! Oh god, <laughs> I'm thinking too much about this now. <laughs> You're invested, that's awesome. Yeah. Adios. It's like when we Adios. saw the new oh, uh, alpha. Yeah. Aim to fail, oh, it will Deadpool. eventually get harder to fail. Exactly, yeah. Um. Yeah. <laughs> Good <but> connect. Yeah, <laughs> when, uh... <laughs> when they were doing the announcement for the new ZBrush update, mm -hmm. the uh, alpha curves... Oh, he's not leaving. Okay. Um, okay. <laughs> yeah, the alpha curves, we were watching those. We were like, it's like one of those Play-Doh thingies where you can make the spaghetti. And then suddenly remembered, we're pretty sure that's called an extruder. Yeah. <laughs> Which is exactly what it's doing. Yep. That is exactly it. Yep. Yeah. Um, we're... What was your first reaction when you saw the new features with ZBrush? Because I tweeted, I literally, my pipeline just changed overnight. Like, what was your uh, initial reaction with these tools that, that um, aimingly seem to really just, um, I would say, like, they're game-changing. It's the first time I think ZBrush actually yeah. brought game-changing tools to the table. This what is... You? This is the first time I was ever genuinely excited about an update because usually it's just like, oh, that's kind of cool. But this time I was like, oh my god, like almost all of these new tools are something that are going to immediately become part of my pipeline. And right. um, like I haven't made anything. Well, that's a lie. I was going to say I haven't made anything with hair since the update, but I did make a fiend from The Witcher mm -hmm, um, nice. for one of the speed sculpts. But the alphas, the alpha curves for hair are amazing. Um, for sculpted hair, at least. Yeah. And I think if you did a low enough, like if you did enough of them at high enough resolution, make them small enough, you could probably use them in place of a fiber mesh. And you'd have to have a pretty strong computer to do that, but you could probably use them to bake hair cards somehow too. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, okay. Okay, yeah, Deadpool was saying some by to somebody. Yeah. Um is it me or do some of these features or some of these features could have been implemented earlier on the releases? Yeah, I wonder. You know the thing is is that this ZBrush had so many bugs in it. This update had so many bugs in particular. I think they kind of knew that. I think they were really yeah. struggling to kind of figure out how not to get it to be so buggy um, right i feel like these features have kind of been like a work in progress and somebody was like oh i think we got it uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> but like like any good developer especially game devs i'm sure um, any good developer knows you can get something that you think looks beautiful and it works perfectly and then you hand it over to the public <laughs> <laughs> and then the public does There's... something completely different with it <laughs> When I was in my coding boot camp, we had a lesson with the uh, UX instructor because the school I went to also does UX and UI design. I did software engineering. Mm -hmm. um, but so we had a group project with some of the UX students. So their instructor came over and gave us a crash course in what UX is because okay. we didn't really even know. Um, but one of the first things she showed us was... In UX, you have to keep the user in mind and remember that you are not the user. Interesting. Um, because you have an idea of how this thing is supposed to work. But as soon as you hand it to a user, they're they're going to use it every way but that way. Um, yeah. So she had a lot of pictures of like, okay, here's a bowl, here's a box of cereal, here's a carton of milk, and here's a spoon. What do you do? And of course, everybody thinking in UX... Um, Eat it. Oh, what the fuck is UX? Uh, UX is uh, user experience. So it's like designing the layout and the flow of anything computery. Um, in our case, websites. But um, so, of course, people see the cereal and everything and they think, okay, you pour the cereal in the bowl, you pour the milk on the cereal, you eat it with the spoon. 
Um, but then she had pictures of like somebody who had filled a bathtub with cereal and milk and was bathing in it. Somebody who like all these different things that the users are going to come up with the weirdest things to try. And the UX person's just going to be sitting there like, ah! <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, Pixel Logic has built a great community and their support is so great that they really, they really have very little to worry about. The community jumps to help. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I actually, I do have a discord link, but, um, the chat is, uh, the chat is currently, uh, set the private on, on popping in. But if you like my discord, just take that link down at the bottom is the discord. You can come in there, share your stuff. Um, I definitely think it would be fun to have a good chat with, uh, uh, like a group chat one of these times. I think that'd be great. Yeah. Oh, you shared the art station, uh, hands. That's right. Nice. Oh, yeah, yeah. Look how expressive <laughs> that hand is. Mm-hmm. Like there are... Oh, he's selling it for $8. It's actually a... They're very... I wouldn't call them stylized, but they are stylized. Like they're not realism. They're a style. But they're not what you think of as quote stylized. Hmm. Um, they're yeah, more like see. traditionally sculpted. I don't know. It's definitely they have a very sculptural quality. Yeah, um, yeah. I would say it's definitely more realism for sure. Um, yeah, but it definitely has that comic, uh, that comic feel to his. Uh, yeah. To the... I followed That's him. That's what I, I was trying to come cool. up with. They have a comic-y style, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Um, Hi, Kisses, how are you doing? Uh, I'm gonna say the new mesh creation tools are really just combinations of existing tools that were more cumbersome to work with. Like, Mesh Project is just a streamlined way of pre performing an extraction. So, it is and it isn't. Because Mesh Project is an extraction, but it's also a lot cleaner than an extraction. Like, the... Uh, edge flow of a mesh project is so much cleaner um and then also the mesh project you can have like if you project one thing on top of a mesh you can project another thing that overlaps that and it's gonna react to being on top of two meshes but you can't do that with an extract hmm yeah all right that's ackerman yeah ryan hit the nail on the head too it's a exaggerate it's an exaggerated style yeah. Combination mm -hmm. of real and stylized, Deadpool says. Yep. <clears throat> All right. All right. Um, let's go ahead and drop down this guy. Bloop. Switch that back over. Yeah. How was you doing? Doing pretty well. Just hanging with Kamara. For those of you Hello. who are coming in, I'm doing a dual stream with Kamara, an amazing, talented artist. <laughs> no, I'm just lying, people. Yeah, let me. <laughs> uh, I'm awful. I mean, I don't know why I'm here. <laughs> Cause you're amazing. Yay! So, but yeah, hopefully you guys have been digging this. This has been this has been a fun experience so far. Mm -hmm. uh, not just dual streaming, but just like creating, uh, just studying art instead of trying to push a, a project or right. trying to get something done. Um, it's been yeah. a nice break from my apology. Yeah, I I can only imagine. <laughs> <laughs> Although I do kind of feel like I'm procrastinating on that, but like anatomy is also good. And I personally like to make sure I'm always sculpting something, even if I'm in the middle of doing some retopology or something. Yeah, I get that. Yeah. I always try to have a project going as well. I think it's, in, it's important to have your own stuff going even though that can be very hard especially for those who who work all the time in the craft that they're they're also trying to get better at mm -hmm. i feel like it can be difficult 
you know. Like, I've been posting YouTube videos, but I slow down a little bit on that because of my commission work, plus wanting to stream and practice and... I hear yeah. some people have this thing called a life, too. I'm not sure what that's like, but... Uh, well, COVID kind of stopped all that. <laughs> <laughs> These sculpts in chat have been awesome. Thank you both. Keep them coming. For sure, yeah. Well, we're going to definitely be doing another dual stream uh, next week. I think Tuesday will be the... Tuesday will be the last dual stream on the Anatomy Project, but I'm sure we'll definitely do more. Hell yeah. Because we're going to be doing Torso Tuesday. <laughs> keyboard, oh. are you dying again? Oh, no. The best keyboard I it's... have cost me... But, well, not, not have. Because the one I have now is a Corsair. And I paid like 40 bucks for this one. But the, ke the best keyboard I ever had lasted me six years. And it was a $5 Amazon keyboard. One of those that said it was worth $100. For... And then it was on sale for yeah. 5 bucks. <laughs> this one I've had for probably about four or five years. Um, it's just a little wireless Logitech, but sometimes I think the wireless receiver might be getting old because it just kind of acts like it doesn't remember that it's wireless. It oh, doesn't yeah. pick up the signal. And I'm like, I can't tell if the batteries are dying or if it's just not sending a signal. But Thank Ian, you for the how hydrate. Do I, how do I sculpt a real world toe bunny? Here you go, Happy Extruder. You ready for this? You take the in flat brush and you go. Yeah. <laughs> Just like that. <laughs> and with the sound effect. Although you do also have to turn the big toe in a little bit, but yes. Oh. Well, it depends <laughs> on where the bunion is at. I guess that would be That's right here. That's true. Right there. And then, yeah, you take this right here and you just <clears throat> like come over here and you squeeze them in. <laughs> <laughs> uh, has no other like zebras. Wait, I don't even know how to say that name. T. S. Whistlebuck. Oh, uh, T. S. Whittlebuck. What T. S. Whittlebuck? Is that how you say it? Um, you need a, a finally. I think. <laughs> I think it's Whittlebuck. I don't think it's Whistle. Yeah, we do need to assemble it, huh? Yeah, Thomas has a really cool keyboard. Nice. Yeah, I have this setup in my head that I really want to get, but that requires money. Right. <laughs> yeah, I'm at the point where I'm like, okay, I need a new desk chair. I need a new keyboard. I need a new mouse. Yep. I also want a printer. <laughs> mm, the struggle is real. I've I've seen people already getting their their stimulus right, and uh, yeah, I got mine. Mine has been uh, I have the it says you either do not qualify or it hasn't been processed. Or we have yet. no information. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm like, hmm. mine said that, and then the next day I got it. So. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll we'll, we'll see what happens. Um, the last stimulus, my brother waited like I'd gotten mine, and then it took my brother like three weeks to get his. Oh man. So, who knows, man? <laughs> <laughs> MJ Sculpts just put it all in Bitcoin. There you go. Yeah. Actually, um, I don't know. Would that even buy a Bitcoin these days? I heard oh, a, God, full, no. a full Bitcoin um, is crazy. $60,000. Um, Citizen Mech, what is my purpose? Are you talking about the butter spreading bot? Oh, yes, Twiddlebock and Pixel Street Thomas Jewelry Design Guy. Yes, ah, uh, yes. Okay, sorry, I'd like, I'm really bad at names and faces. Is it Whistlebuck? Yes. I always thought it was Whittlebuck. Well, I'm probably saying it wrong. <laughs> well, no, I'm pretty sure it has two T's in it. Oh, uh, but yeah, no, Thomas is awesome. I love watching him. He's such a great designer. I gotta, I gotta pop into his streams more. When does he stream more, uh... I guess Whittles I Buck. Okay. I'm We're all wrong. The... It's <laughs> should probably just check W I T T E L S. Yeah. T S Whittle. Okay, yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm very bad with names, but cool. T S Whittlebuck, got it. Nice. 
Yeah. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> typed I... it wrong. Yeah, he is. Yeah, no, he's awesome. <laughs> uh, since Zebra Scrail um... uses GPU, my GPU is mining. <laughs> <laughs> well, isn't... Hold on. I'm going to ask this. and I'm just curious because this is what I've heard because I have a few friends who are really into Bitcoin. I thought mining Bitcoin is stupid these days. And I mean that in the sense like there's nothing to mine anymore. I thought it was all found. Yeah, is there's still the case? such a small percentage left to find. The people that are actually making money with mining it have like whole server farms of 3090s crazy um but you can mine other coins you can mine other coins yeah, very, um, very... Oh, okay so you can do other things so it's not just okay now mm -hmm. i'm just i don't know much about it so it's one of those things that i didn't really deep dive but i have friends who are really into it and so mm -hmm. for me i thought you know, because I, don't I didn't think I have, have the... direct friends who are, but I have like friends of friends who are. But I, I know, like at this moment in time, Bitcoin is like kind of losing its mind because there's so much yeah. old media servers that actually um, that have Bitcoins on it that nobody can access. Mm -hmm. So you know, that's kind of dead. Okay, Monday night at eight. Perfect. Is he in the LA area? If he's at 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Hey, thank you so much for the follow. Sorry, I did not see who that was, but thank you. I appreciate it. Because um, that's funny. So many artists I'm finding are in my area, and I cannot wait mm. for COVID to get done. Right? <laughs> that's one, like, that is one of the very few things I miss about living in California. Because um, I always refer to living there as it was basically a six year vacation that I couldn't actually afford. Um, yeah. But I really miss being in such close proximity with so many other game developers. Yeah. Yeah, I get that. Uh, Ryan says, well, stuff like uh, nice hash. It's not technically mining, but selling hash power. Okay, that makes sense. Cool. That was a weird jump. My screen did something weird. Uh, but Thomas, <laughs> don't do anatomy sculpts. You don't know anatomy that good. He admits it. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> That guy makes beautiful jewelry. That guy mm -hmm. can do... Thomas can do whatever he wants. <laughs> right. Tell him IR says so. Thomas, do whatever you want. <laughs> uh, he was actually the inspiration because um, I was deciding on if I wanted to do jewelry or not. And I still want to dabble. I still want to play a little bit because I make stuff for 3D printing and I have a, a manufacturing machining background. So I definitely want to get into it a little bit more. Um... And his work was always super inspiring. So for me, yeah, it was definitely like one of those, uh, one of the guys to look at um, and feel inspired by. So. Oh, MJ says uh, mining is not about finding Bitcoin. Miners verify the blockchain transactions, keeping the network secure. They're awarded a certain amount of Bitcoin for verifying the transactions correctly. So it's a highly competitive. It is highly competitive. Uh, especially ever, or especially since every three to four years, the amount of Bitcoin awarded is cut in half. Um, currently, miners are only awarded six Bitcoin with, when they successfully verify verify Bitcoin transactions. Wait, they are rewarded only with six, six Bitcoin. Only six, or only right, only six Bitcoin. Wait, I was gonna say only six, or is it only like point six? Like, is that right. a whole? Are we talking a whole number here? Because um, if that's it, that's investment. <laughs> you might have convinced me to start mining. <laughs> oh, you definitely don't have the processing power to do anything worthwhile with mining it. Yeah, probably not. No, I'd need a whole new rig for that. Uh, oh, I, yeah. no, you'd need a whole server farm. Like, they have factories of, like, just warehouses of GPUs that are just mining Bitcoin. Yeah, that's that's insane. We that's why nobody can again. find the GPUs they want. Kind of, Carde. Kind of. We're just talking about like uh, Bitcoin, but not not crazy. Yeah. But there will only ever be 21 million Bitcoin. Currently, they have been over 18 million mined. So hmm. there's only about three million left. Happy Extruder has been purchasing gold and silver 
and when gold was 350 an ounce and silver was eight bucks an ounce. If there's any advice I can give about coins, collect those. <laughs> <Sounds good. laughs> It'll cost so much money in energy costs alone. Exactly, right? Right. Yep. I had back in like 2017. I think I paid like 50 bucks for some Bitcoin. Um, it was at about 11,000 at the time, I think. So I've made a bit of money, but it's not like it's a couple hundred. It's nothing to scoff at, but I'm definitely not rich. Right. No, exactly. Okay, real quick, just because uh, um, I want to definitely like showcase with the next step. So I'm looking up actual like feet reference, not anatomy so much. Yeah, I'm looking at this reference right now. So we're going to be talking about, we're going to be showing some feet. It's funny, like feet are just weird. Let's see here. I'm going to bring up my pure ref real quick because now we're just going to be kind of showcasing how skin and all that good stuff is. And I don't want to copy um, somebody's style, so I'm not going to look up feet sculptures. <clears throat> Just gonna look up feet and then kind of just put in my own my own take and ideas on it now that we're getting to some finer details wow this yeah the reference i have up right now swung. is the one that i'm i'm bit vaguely using this foot mm -hmm. i'm not trying to make exactly this foot i'm just using it for getting reference. landmarks and yeah exactly toenails and such so random fact about me i'm uh i can't really move my toes like some of these people interesting can. it's um it's very bizarre mine i can move mine but they seem to curl under more than most people's yeah yeah i can i can point my toes back because that's like how you do a front kick in martial arts but I don't know if it's just damage or I've never really done it, but my toes are just mm. kind of, I can't spread them apart that far, um, but I can point them back. Um, so, I mean, yeah, I'm always impressed when I see people like move their <laughs> their toes, like fingers. I'm like, wow, how do you do that? Yeah, <laughs> mine, I definitely can't move them like that. Um... See, each toe seems to have yeah. its own GPS. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly, yeah. I'm actually always fascinated by... Um, I do yoga every once in a while, and people will like sit on their heels with their toes under their feet. Like mm -hmm. I don't know how to explain it, but like they'll put their toes on the ground and then their heels up in the air, and then they sit on their heels. And I, I can't do that. My toes will not stretch that far. It hurts so bad. And that's just like a resting position for them. And I'm like, uh-uh. <laughs> Man, that's... It feels yeah. like I'm going to tear everything in the bottom of my foot. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, that's bizarre. How bizarre. <laughs> yeah, how bizarre. So, oh my god, I haven't thought of that song in years. Snickles is lurking. My keys. Hi, I, Snickles. I pick up stuff with my feet all the time. <laughs> oh, I do pick things up with my feet. No. Um... My feet are useless. Fortissi yeah. <laughs> asked MJ, uh, what happens in a couple of decades when they own all the Bitcoin to been mined? He said, uh, by then some of these other cryptos will have taken hold on in our financial systems and Bitcoin will be like gold as a hedge against inflation. Um, could they do something like split Bitcoin similar to how stocks get split or does that concept not make sense in this context? No, it can't. This is getting way above my head. <laughs> <laughs> above no, my it can't grade. be split, but you don't have to own a full Bitcoin. You can just own fractions of coins. Yeah, uh, again, I, something about uh, enough of the topic. I don't know. Right. You know, I know it's it's, it's used widely or, or widely. Uh, amongst the community i know um you know the fbi has bitcoin so <laughs> i mean that, do you remember that hacker live... that they paid sorry to cut you off. um 
Remember the hacker that they paid to break into that iPhone because Apple wouldn't give them the uh, the information to get into? Yeah. And then they paid the hacker like they said it was like six times what the um, the FBI the chief of FBI actually made, and yeah. they paid it in Bitcoin. And it's mm -hmm. like, yeah, no, they they do business in Bitcoin too, like. Yep. Um. MJ, feel free to go off on a tangent on crypto. I may or may not read everything you say because I probably won't understand it, but other people might be interested. <laughs> yep. All right, so real quick uh, before we get back on that topic. So I'm making nails right now, for those of you who are watching me, and I just went ahead and <laughs> made made different polygroups um, with the mask feature, and then I'm going to use that same trick that I was normally using, but before I do anything, I'm going to go to the polish by features to just kind of clean that up a little bit. And then kind of just uh, straighten out the, the poly groups just a, just a bit. And then I'll end up masking by selecting masking and then pulling that toe up to get that toenail. That's how I do nails. And then kind of forward. And then I sculpt the rest back. Um, so the Mac one's supposed to pick? Go for it. Luke, tilt yeah, on my and hand, stretch. I did the nails a little differently on my hand. I ended up uh, making the nails a separate subtool. Uh -huh. And I just kind of inserted them. This time I'm sculpting them out, and I'm actually going to be doing the same thing you just described. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It was funny because um, I used to do nails um, with actually drawing out a subtool, which you can do. There's nothing wrong with that. Just use the um, topology mm, yep. brush and do that. But... This is. Sorry, I keep interrupting people. <laughs> <laughs> this is so much faster. Yeah. All right, go so ahead. this is Citizen Mech found the picture of the yoga pose I was talking about. The Yoda sit, yoga sit. Oh, nice. I pop over and see. Even just looking at it makes my feet hurt. Oh yeah yeah yeah. Oh, cause you, are you gonna pose it? Hey Citizen Mech. Hey MJ Sculpts. Oh no, I was just saying this is the the yoga pose that hurts my feet and I can't oh, do yeah, it. Oh yeah yeah yeah. Um. um and other people just do it like it's a resting pose, and I'm like, uh-uh. It seriously feels like I'm going to injure my feet if I try. Oh, that's okay. In martial arts, that's how you have to sit when you're waiting for your uh, instructor to get on the mat. So. Yeah, it's just a resting pose for yoga, but I can't. You guys want to see Roger? <laughs> He's out of permission MJ now. says... MJ says he thought you were going to say that you used to do nails professionally. <laughs> no. I think I showed you my beardy before. Hi, buddy. Just chilling. <laughs> he's, been, he's been very lazy. Now let's see if he'll sit. There you go, buddy. He's been uh, in brumation this whole time. Now he's finally uh. he's finally out and happy. Yay! He's gonna get a mouse today. He doesn't know that. Ooh, fancy. Unless he speaks English. <laughs> well, he does now. You just told him. <laughs> As we say, unless he speaks English, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's awesome. He's my favorite pet. Nice. I only have one pet right now. So he's my favorite. <laughs> I was about to ask if you have other pets. <laughs> no, no. I have no. two favorite pets. They're, and they're both, both kitties. Equally, equally, yeah. Equally favorite. I have a, I have a favorite daughter and a favorite son. <laughs> and I'm glad that's that stops there. <laughs> yeah. Be like, you're my favorite daughter. She's like, what about Ryan? I'm like, is Ryan... <laughs> my daughter no okay there you go 
<laughs> yeah, the quietest child, exactly. It's really cool now is you can really like you can really uh isolate and select just like a certain section and use um sculptures pro if you wanted to so that you can detail without adding so much topology unless you want mm -hmm. really clean topology because i feel like at the end of the day you still want really clean topology actually never used Sculptors Pro until very recently. Yeah, I wasn't a fan actually, of it. Two weeks ago, I used it for my Tiki. That's the first time I ever used it. What's up, buddy? I think you want to fly the window. You want to go in the window? Yeah. Uh... His name's Roger, and uh, he basically, like, we opened up his uh, cage, and then we, there's a window right by, so we open it up, and he crawls out, and he stands in front of the window, and he looks at the birds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I'm liking that chip and the pinky toes, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, well, that's some nail definition. Uh, it looks like I was talking to my crotch. Yeah, well, you know. I had my beardy dragon in my in my lap. All right, let's not give Twitch another thing to start banning people on. So right, is this guy talking to himself down there? Oh. Seriously. Uh, said so he tried that pose. It's not that bad, but might be because I did judo as a kid, which had me sit in a similar pose. There's a stretch in my Achilles heel. I tried lifting my knees while sitting in that pose. I can't see people resting like that, constantly stretching the feet, heel, leg. So for me, I don't even feel it in my Achilles. My Achilles is fine. I have really good calf stretch. But my feet, I can't make a 90 degree angle with my toes. Like they physically cannot go that far. And yeah. I've been trying to stretch them on my own to see if I can get there, but it doesn't seem to be getting any better. Interesting. <laughs> I can't hear anything on that. <laughs> what guy does it once in his life? Exactly, my Casey. <laughs> yeah, that's really interesting. I mean, but you could spread your toes, so you're you're good there, right? Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, so I can spread my toes. I can point my toes. I can't do that 90 degree angle bend. <laughs> hey, Alice422, thank you so much for the follow. And for those of you who are new and you wonder who the other voice is, there is the dual stream to Kamara. Hello. And I would post mine, but it just posted itself. <laughs> so there you go, yep. So if there's anyone here who's not watching both of us, click that link. All right. Or don't see if I care. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And also, what's cool is nails, toenails, like automatically, uh, just kind of like make the foot a little bit more realistic. Like as soon as you add mm -hmm. nails, I feel like it doesn't matter how ugly your foot is. As soon as you add the nails in. All of a sudden, it's it's just it's better. It's a foot. <laughs> yeah, it's my hand. The other day, as soon as I put nails on, it was like, okay, there it is. Now it's a hand. <laughs> now I'm trying to make my toes do things too. <laughs> 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 yep. Yeah, I can't do that. I can't fucking do that. I could point them, and I can I could put it in somebody's face, but that's it. <laughs> yeah, look like a sexy one. <laughs> And then I could be like, I'm gonna kick you in the face. I can, yeah. My 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 four little toes stay together, and my big toe can move. That's it. That's what I got, man. <laughs> I should show you my satyr hoof. I have to walk around for eight hours on those things on fantasy convention. 
Oh, yeah. See, I can wear high, high heels, which I don't know what your hooves look like. I don't know if they'd be similar to the pose that you have to be in for high heels, but the combination of the 90 degree angle with your toes and your heel, the mm -hmm. bottom of my foot just won't let me do that. Interesting. Um, it's just the bottom of my foot. So wearing heels, you're pointing your ankle, but then flexing your toes. Mm -hmm. That's fine. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. Well. Well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> uh. yeah. Oh, thanks for the follow, Alice. Much appreciated. Welcome yeah. in. Yeah. All right. All right. Now I'm just kind of trying to smooth some of the areas down. You can see the polygroup creases, so I'm going to clean those up a little bit. There we go. I feel like uh, I'm going to make this, this foot uh, as, as good as I can, so I don't have to sculpt another one for a while. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I feel like with, with torso and back study, we might be able to then combine everything together as we're yeah. doing the torso make and back study. And then, just and make then we can mesh. see what our Franken characters look like. <laughs> yeah. Ryan brought that up earlier. Um, and I think it's a great idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I forgot I was going to duplicate this foot so that I can project detail down. There you go. Yeah. It's a duplicate. cool feature, isn't it? Right? Okay, geometry. Let's do a ziri mesh. Am I missing and a middle let's... knuckle for toes? Um, not everybody's. I don't see my middle knuckles, but I also didn't give them super long. But I mean, I'm adding it in as we speak. Like you, like that's literally what I'm doing right at this moment. <laughs> I don't see mine, really, on mine. Of course, my feet are ugly. You guys don't want to see my feet. <laughs> I think I can go even lower on that Ziri mesh, so let's try that. We'll see if it works. It might not. Yeah. <laughs> uh oh, maybe not. No, I've got a little weirdness on this nail. You're fine, right? It's funny, dude. I, like, right when you were thinking it, I was like, yep, start making those impressions. <laughs> <laughs> Great minds, man. Great minds. That's all I'm going to say. Are you judging my feet, Ryan? <laughs> all right. Uh, let's go ahead and save. And then Stream Raiders is ready. I will be right back. I think someone's at my door. Oh, yeah. surprise guest. I myself for a second here. Surprise guest. All right. All right, let's start the battle. <laughs> All right. <laughs> More like curiosity. Yeah, no, I'm just teasing you now, man. <laughs> I have to tease you, buddy. All right, let's see if we win this one. We should. Death is here, so you know, can't lose when death is here. Yay! All right, and card and death. Yep, there you go. Brush for hire. Yay! Brush for hire is playing. That's awesome. Okay, and go ahead and just start. Boop, 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 boop. Let's go ahead and put. Just gonna start putting big stuff on there. Get <laughs> didn't do shit that time. <laughs> I am all that is man. <laughs> That's funny. 
All right. Let's move that big toe nail forward. I return. You return. Hello. My uh, property manager with the maintenance guy, because apparently they're doing pest inspection today, but they didn't actually want to come in. They just wanted me to be here. No. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't question... Uh, I don't question uh, landlords. Right. Like, I'd, I'd prefer them not coming in right now anyway, so this is fine. Right, exactly. But they always say they're going to do a pest inspection and then they don't actually inspect anything. Mm. No, that's always Not fun. that I have, yeah, not that I have pests that I'm aware of, but. Although I do have pesty kitties. Right, there you go. <laughs> All right. Gonna use the uh, H polish. One of my favorite brushes. There we go. Hey, next box. This little thingy. Yeah, <laughs> next time. <laughs> uh, stay safe, all. Thanks for the stream in the chat, Kamara. Thank you as well. Says, happy extruder for the dual stream. Stay safe and always happy extruding. Happy extruding, happy sculpting. <laughs> happy uh, poop emote extruding. Oh god, I need to stop bringing that up. <laughs> yeah, before we all judge you. <laughs> hey, it was his emote. Yeah, it was. <laughs> all right. Yeah, you're fine. <laughs> we can't talk about poop what can we talk about right well, <laughs> Next next very George. few things lately but yeah i know twitch will just Thanks, ban twitch. you again yep yeah next next what you doing what you working on I'm going to use the damn standard to start carving in the details of the nails. Shots fired! <laughs> What's Twitch spanning for now? Uh, who knows, man. That's the joke these days. Yep. Who knows what the hell Twitch is going to start banning next. I shared an article, uh, Next Nox, on, um, on my... Twitter uh, that Cardi shared earlier about uh, uh, the things that Twitch has done lately from muting Metallica's own stream <laughs> to um, uh, affiliate paid stuff to 13 year old pre 13 year old kids so people who've had accounts before they were 13 those who made money stayed on the platform those who didn't make money Twitch kicked out um, yeah, it's just little things like that. It's like really interesting to think about, actually. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's all very interesting. All right, I'm kind of using the inflate brush a little bit to press the nails and stuff together. I find that's a pretty cool technique. It's like how I do seams, too, on clothing. I'll like cut in the seam and then I'll use the inflate brush to kind of press that together. It kind of looks like it's oh, okay. two pieces. Which is pretty cool. Hasn't stirred me wrong yet. <laughs> yes. Yeah, or sometimes I'll mask off an area. Like I'll mask off the, let's take the lasso brush for example, and I'll mask off where that seam will be. And then I'll go ahead and inflate over that masked area. That's helpful too sometimes. Yeah. Makes sense, although it's worth noting Metallica wasn't muted. Oh no, they just took copyrighted music. Uh, they, they banned it as copyright music, and then they put royalty-free music over it. So... Um, yeah, it was during the BlizzCon streams. 
Oh no, I heard the Blizz uh, in the article. It actually references the BlizzCon stream itself was muted in the beginning of it. Then I heard that it was unmuted, but then people re-hosting the stream got muted for sure. Mm-hmm. But more to the point is Metallica then complained about it, which is funny because that comes full circle with the Napster thing. All right. It's like, you guys but, know that you were part of the reason this is such a big deal online, right? Right. But they complained about it being muted in general. They were like, no, 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 you don't do that. We were doing it for a reason. We're saying it's okay, but Twitch said, nope, it's not okay. Mm-hmm. So it's just interesting. Yep. But I also didn't watch it, so... I don't really care for Metallica these days. Not my favorite band. I like their old stuff. I, I like their I like two latest the albums. I, um, Death Magnetic and uh, what's it called? Hard Hardwired. Um, I like those, but we just pretend Saint Anger doesn't exist. Mm, there you go. Nah, I was kind of out when uh, Reload came out back mm. in high school. That was a while ago. And some of their stuff is still kind of fun, but I don't know. It seems all weird to me. <laughs> it's just... Yeah, I don't know. I feel like they, they, you know, I mean, they start, they, they like started speed metal and, and I just, I liked them when they were younger. I guess that's really all it is. <laughs> yeah. You want to see 10 minute challenges? Oh my God. I did a 15-minute challenge <clears throat> uh, at the last Pixelogic event I was able to go to before COVID, and it was like, do a sculpt a emote in 15 minutes. Yeah, that was, that was a pretty cool challenge. What emote did you make? Uh, I made a spider. Nice. I did not win, because it was hard to read. Because they scaled it down to an emote size. Oh, of and course. I did not think about that at the time I made it. But yeah. when it was showcased, everybody was like, oh, that's pretty cool. And then. <laughs> and then. And then. Napster bad South Park. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> nice emote challenge. Yeah. Maybe we should do something like that. That'd be fun. That'd be fun, yeah. No, and then. No, and then? <laughs> no, and then. And <laughs> then? Yeah. No, and then. <laughs> <laughs> and then, you could take the food and put it in the bag, because I'm ready to eat. <laughs> <laughs> That's another thing I haven't thought about in years. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Let's go ahead and mask this section off real quick. <clears throat> this toenail looks like it's kind of floating a little bit. So I'm going to... Mine got a little weird with the projection, so I'm uh, going back and doing another Z remesh. Ah, there you go. I think at the end of your guys' stream, you should critique each other's. Ooh. Mm hmm. Mm. Do you want to be judged, Kamara? <laughs> <laughs> Judge me! <laughs> I'm definitely feeling less confident about my foot than I was with some of the other stuff earlier in the week. But again, this is my first actual human foot. I say if it looks like a foot, you did a good job. <laughs> Oh, I gotta hydrate. Thank you, Citizen Mech. I wouldn't mind taking a look at it a little bit more. more uh, I wouldn't mind doing something like that, where we take a kind of a closer look at our at our scores. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't mind doing that. There we go. That was another thing that I thought was sort of funny about the uh, 
when we were doing our critiques in my mentorship last night mm -hmm. um with the one that uh Anna had pulled up first of mine. It was just like, oh god, it's so bad. Why is it so bad? I don't remember it being this bad. Um, it was the wrong subtool. Not that the right subtool was finished by any means, but it was significantly better than the one that she had pulled up first. But she asked for a group critique, and nobody said anything. And I'm just like, oh, come on. Somebody has <laughs> to have something to say. It's not good. Right. Um, I need to get some water, water, one second. My uh, coffee is bothering my throat. Hold on, guys. Also, Next Nox is just trolling the fuck out of me right now. <laughs> <laughs> Scale of 1 to 10, suckability for toes. Go. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> well, we were talking about ending up with the fetishists in here. I guess it's Next Nox. That's no, a king shame. If it looked super realistic, go. I would That's start to question bit. your diet. <laughs> I'm seeing both of you have different strengths, so it'd be cool to see each of your perspectives, your perspectives on each other. You're so offended, Next Nox? No, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> I disagree with you, sir. I don't think you are. Well, yeah. I mean, if you, if I'm down to do it, if you're down to do it, we can uh, take yeah. screen grabs and then kind of, uh, um, you can go first on my foot, and then uh, I can go on your foot. <laughs> that sounds weird, but you know. <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> <laughs> and the foot fetish comes out. <laughs> so, just, so I had said something about. Um... The fact that we mentioned we may end up with the fetishists in here. Um, uh -huh. Not to kink shame, but maybe that's next Nux because he's talking about the sucking toes. <laughs> um, that's why he said I'm so offended. Um, but yeah, Citizen Mech over here said, uh, fair warning, Twitch can be anal about fetish talk. And I'm like, okay, so both of those words got blocked by Automod. <laughs> oh, wow. That's funny. Oh well, you know what's gonna happen is Twitch is gonna uh, become uh, less relevant the more they keep doing this because a new, another streaming platform is going to emerge. Right. Uh, in the midst of all of this, that, I bet you there's yeah, somebody that out actually there. allows for um, artists to have nudes and things like that on screen. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's not it's not gonna be the end all be all. It's just right. I mean, like uh, I think it's um, Own 3D is still a streaming platform. I don't know if anybody remembers who they are, but don't think I've ever even heard of it. Yeah, they were a gaming platform. I used to stream on them back when I first started streaming when Twitch was just in TV, um, and then, uh, but then Twitch became more popular. Mm -hmm. So I left there. Now, if YouTube stepped up, <clears throat> that would be that would be a better option. <clears throat> Did you know you're supposed to cut your uh, toenails straight? You're actually most people don't, but you're supposed to. I don't think I could with the shape of my toes. Me neither. But yeah, you're so yeah. But I always start them out straight. And then what I do, same with fingernails. If you guys watch me do my fingernails, I did straight because it's easier to get cleaner topology. And then after which, once you get the shape and stuff you like, I then just kind of pull them out. Oh no, ZBrush, don't do it. Okay, there we go. But also too. I got um, the white I'm crashing screen, but it, it caught up. Oh, there you go. Um, but I always start with straight nails, and then I adjust later. It's just some, it's just something I've done. Straight? Why? Yeah, I, that's just, it's supposed <laughs> to prevent, uh, same with fingernails, it's supposed to prevent um, ingrown, to uh, ingrown 
toenails or ingrown fingernails. Um, I got a pedicure once and never again because they tried to cut my toenails square and when they tried to do that, they ended up cutting too far because my toenails just don't want to go straight. Hmm. Interesting. So mm, even just thinking about that is making me cringe a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> So we were saying the other day, one of the things that makes me squeamish is anything to do with nail injuries. And I'm like, ugh. Oh. Well, I have a story for you. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> no, oh, uh, God. I had a friend that as soon as he found out... Uh, oh, and by the way, we're not friends anymore, but this is not the reason why. Okay, um, good. <laughs> although it's definitely part of why I don't care that we're not friends anymore. Um, oh, there you go. Kept telling me a story about nail injuries like he would tell me probably about once a month and i'm just like i'm going to kill you <laughs> <laughs> see i used to get a lot of ingrown toenails as a kid lots of mm. ingrown toenails and so um uh i would go to the doctor all the time for them um and the doctor would keep would, uh would keep actually uh showing me how to cut them and he would always cut them straight and to the point that toenails are not clippers, toenail clippers are not straight. Um, the ones that we normally use are not actually proper. Even the big ones aren't proper for toenails, like these ones that we squeeze. There's actually ones that are designed to have more of a of a straight cut to it, but the angle is actually designed to help alleviate so that you don't crack your nail when you cut it. It's mm. it's you know so they they'd explain to me that you know you start off at like you cut the front so that it's as straight as possible and then you round off the edges just ever so slightly but not fully circled um and it's supposed to make sure that when the nail gets past a nail bed that it's actually putting enough pressure and that it doesn't want to split off and do its own thing so um i'd get this a lot but what they found out later is i just had really weak nails and my nails would just mm -hmm. break and tear so it wasn't a matter of me not taking care of them. It's just I had really weak uh, toenails. Mm -hmm. And so they um, then were like, calcium. Lots of calcium. <laughs> yeah. I... So my toenails, if I let them get long and I start ending up with even the slightest bit of corner that comes out past the nail bed, mm -hmm. I end up scratching my other toes and it's really painful. So it's just, it's not worth it to me. I've never had an ingrown toenail, so... Lucky you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, they, they suck. They're not fun. Yeah. Right, Lupus? Yeah. <laughs> you mean we aren't supposed to chew them into shape? <laughs> you exactly. told me else. Um, Give you a link to these. I mean, uh, when I was little, I totally chewed on my toenails. <laughs> and by little, I mean like six. Yeah. Um. I'll pull up the picture of the ones that um, were always rec recommended by me to doctors, and it's these right here. And it's just, you see, it has a slight curve to it, but when you clip with these, it's actually straight. Uh, I don't oh, know about yeah, this I've company. I don't know about this company, but yeah, these are the toenail clippers you're supposed to have. Um, they make a bigger version of the others, but yeah. Um, that's what was always Nox recommended is, gotta say of all the programs I have that, uh, or I use that white screen like that I have the most confidence in ZBrush yeah I most of the time I don't panic when ZBrush does that with any other program now I'm like oh god <laughs> um, and then Citizen Max says I don't recommend watching Higurashi if you can't handle nail gore English name is when they cry good to know I'm gonna yeah not look that one up <laughs> <laughs> there you go yeah that, that all sounds legit don't look it up yeah yeah i use those uh, to clip supports on my prints <laughs> yeah i mean so, i have um i have these they're definitely not nail clippers but i want to see they're super cheap little support cutters for the like two prints I've had so far. Yeah, yeah, I have those too. Yep. I think I paid like five bucks for them. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's. Hi, Randy. It was definitely interesting. 
Yeah. I just chalk that up to all the things you've been doing wrong. <laughs> you ever see those videos? It's like, oh, the 10 things you do wrong that you do every day. Right. Okay. Or the 10 things you have been using incorrectly your whole life, and then you watch it, and it's like, I don't use those, or I did already know that was a thing? I don't know. You gotta get a knife for her. You gotta get a knife. To... <laughs> Next slide says you gotta get a toe knife like Frank. God. Right? Yeah. Oh, God. Oh, I love it. Like a TED Talk on tying shoes. Yeah, exactly. Use tongs to cut cake in his penis. Oh, that's funny. So it doesn't says I have those two, though I initially bought them for cutting out the Gundam parts. Yeah, I mean, I, these are not toenail cutters. These are meant for cutting model parts. Mm -hmm. I got them specifically to cut Indy out of his supports. That's so funny. Little Indiana Jones. And then I've had a couple other models since him that I've had to cut out. Um, I think if I do get my own printer, I definitely need to get some better support cutters, because these are not great. But in the meantime, I've been using them to trim my pepper plant. <laughs> oh, well, there you go. They're my super cheap pruning shears. Nice, nice. Okay, what I need to do is like kind of... I think I need to clip curve the bottom of this a little bit. suddenly have a fuzzy helper oh, oh I did you're that not wrong. helping very much when you try to climb me I don't Smith know, I didn't a. Do, I did that right smith is here just in time for brandy oh hello using <laughs> the video of guys using razor blades to get off old dead skin on feet is cringe oh my gosh. oh god yeah. oh god that's sound. twitch is gonna ban both of us <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, I guess I'll just be my excuse to officially go to YouTube full time. Right. Yeah, I actually, so since, uh, do you want to stay up here or not? Um, since Vertex got his booby ban, um, I've been sitting here going, okay, Twitch has basically become my life at this point because I live alone and I do art all day, so I watch other people while I work on things I can't stream, and I stream personal work. Right. Um, and I've been doing art like 16 hours a day, which might not be healthy, but I love it. Um, um, don't say that's not healthy, because that's been my life since COVID started. Right. <laughs> uh, my lovely co streamer. I mean, I live alone. What else am I going to do? Yeah. My lovely co streamer is Kamara. Um, she is a talented game artist. Check her out. So we're dual streaming right now. You can see her other foot. And, uh, let me post. Oh, that's not the right link anymore. What? Pablo Poderma. Um. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Like, you know, before... Well, be I was affiliate for a little bit. And then... <laughs> Thank you so much for the follow. Yeah, um, whatchamacallit, uh, what was I saying? I totally lost my train of thought. <laughs> oh, uh, thanks for the follow, Lucas. Yeah. Um, oh, uh, I was affiliate at one point with, with Twitch, and then mm -hmm. affiliate, um, was something you could buy into, and I was a little perturbed at that, um, notion because it was that pay-to-play mentality. Right. Um, and then I got a couple DMs, uh, DMCA hits, but then they retracted them pretty quickly. Um, it was right in the beginning of it all. Mm -hmm. But for me, like the main purpose of streaming was to just kind of motivate myself and to connect with other mm -hmm. people and have a good time, right? Um, but uh, yeah, um, at the end of the day, yeah, no, I, I love it. And I remember thinking like, you know, YouTube would be a good platform, but it's also not at the same time and it's weird because right. some of us have made this now kind of our 
our livelihood. A lot of my commissions come from here. Um, I've been able to make progress and uh, get company's attention. So it is also very interesting um, how Twitch has helped, but now Twitch is kind of in trouble. So it's like, mm -hmm. what, do we, what do we do with that? Yeah, and ever since uh, Vertex got his ban, <clears throat> suspension he should be back tomorrow as far as i know i did the math right um but ever since that happened i've been like okay what would i do if i got one of those because like i said i've been doing this for so many hours a day at this point i don't even know what i would do with myself if suddenly i couldn't stream for three days um so I've had to start thinking about that, and I'm like, would I just switch to a different platform? Probably. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> I mean, you Even can't... if it's just a three-day suspension, I would probably immediately hop to YouTube. Yeah, YouTube or... Um, well, that's why I restream, because I wanted to be able to reach a larger audience and, mm -hmm. you know, not worry about the affiliate bands and stuff like that. So, um, uh, Mike DC says, if you're doing the left, is she doing the right? Uh, what foot are you doing? Are you doing the left or the right? I'm doing a lady foot. I am... I'm doing the right. You do Are you doing the right? That's awesome. I'm doing yep. the left. I've been doing the left on everything, guys, because then I could just mirror and weld it to the opposite side. Um, I actually haven't been paying attention to which side I've done. I think I did right arm, right hand, right foot, but I, I think I did the left leg. <laughs> Vertex got suspended because of uh, showing under boobs, like slight, like side boob, like yeah. just it was it was reference uh for the project he was working on and, and it was there like was no this, nipple no 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 but it was just like just a little bit of, of, of side cleavage uh and that was enough and they flagged it for three days because that's and you know course, they have a three strikes rule so if he does this again you know yeah it's twitch is getting ridiculous mm -hmm. um well, and of say. course, he tried to appeal, but they're not going to get back to him until after the suspension's up. Yeah. That's but it might cool. help with, like, not getting three strikes, like, if it happens again. But uh, yeah. you could hang out in Discord with someone who's streaming. Yeah, I could. Um, the problem yeah. is that I'm only talking to one person, and I like talking to chat, too. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm here for the social aspect. Yeah. It, it's interesting. It's an interesting thing that's kind of uh, presented itself. That's why I, sh I shared the article that was shared with me because, uh, you know, twi Twitch, is, Twitch is going through some things. <laughs> mm -hmm. And uh, who knows how it's going to look on the other side. Right. You know? But in the meantime, you know, you just, you try to... Like, I've never done anything that would, quote, technically break the rules, but, you know, the rules are closing in, and they're not being fair as far as what what constitutes, you know, bad or not. I don't think they really know what they're doing. I think they're just, like, taking precautions and over... They're pushing their weight a little too far on those who don't make money, but then they're loose on people who do make money, and that's... Right. That's something I'm noticing. And it's like, well... YouTube went through this in 2008. You guys should go back in time and kind of take a look at how they handled that. And then maybe mm -hmm. just do the same thing. I don't know. I don't know, man. Maybe this Growing is why I don't own a business. Growing platform. No, you can do group streams in Discord. Yeah, you can do group scene streams in Discord, but everybody Oh, no, that's not what server. we're talking about, but yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we need an art-based streaming service for sure. Maybe Twitch yep. doesn't know what art or the human body is. <laughs> exactly. Well, also to my point too, uh, uh, Baby's First Puke, which awesome name, by the way. The thing I've noticed is there are still fitness channels that are showing a lot of uh, body parts. Like, you know, like the, the correlation between the two, male or female, it shouldn't really matter. If you're not wanting shirtless people on Twitch, then then ban the whole thing but fitness channels are interesting if you peek in there you could see kind of the hypocrisy that twitch is doing meanwhile we're sculpting art and somebody gets a booby ban because he pulled up some reference you know by if accident he was, too yeah if he's doing full if he was doing full nudity on the side i would suggest you know okay maybe that's where you have a case but also too 
wasn't his channel set to mature audiences? Like, mm -hmm. what's the mature audience and, rating for then? I mean, right, like that's the thing. They say you have to set your channel to mature audiences, and it's like, okay, well, what's the point? Because in their rules, it even states like, I'm an artist. Am I allowed to draw or paint a nude figure as art? And their response is, even if you set your channel to 18 plus, you're not allowed to because we don't have a way of monitoring that. And it's like, then what's the point of setting it to 18 plus? Right. Why even have a mature audience is at that point. Yeah. So, I, yeah, that's where for me, it's like Twitch, you kind of fail on mm -hmm. that market. You should you should like, I don't know. But then, of course, you know, not, the Internet's not regulated. So to their point, though, how can you regulate something that's not regulated? Right, but then it's kind of one of those, like, <laughs> is it on the platform to regulate whether under 18 can see that kind of thing, or should it be more on the parents not letting their kids go on Twitch by themselves, or I don't know. Yeah. I, I mean, hey, YouTube's got it down. Let's all move to YouTube. Yeah. Let's call it, let's call it there. Everybody go to YouTube. Honestly, I started streaming on Twitch specifically because I had... So I had been watching videos on YouTube and I got to the point where I was like, I need something a little more interactive. And then I remembered Pixelogic streams to Twitch. So I came over here, started following other artists. You were actually the first non-Pixelogic uh, channel, art channel at the time that I started following. <laughs> um, now look at me. I'm a big fan. <laughs> right? <laughs> I all grow up now. Like, I was following Pixelogic, and then I found you because I was searching through the art tab, and I was like, look, someone in ZBrush. And you were just blocking out Vega at the time. Yeah. Um, All right, there. And, but yeah, I started streaming over here just because I had met everyone over here. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, as, as and that makes sense. That's exactly what it should have been. Uh, uh, Martin had said that art stations should get off their ass and start a streaming service already, which <laughs> I think so many artists would actually pay to have happen. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. If if art station did come up with a streaming service that said, you know, five dollars a month, maintain service, you know, uh, streaming services so that kind of help build like the streaming thing, you know, and you're there to kind of like put your stuff up. Um, I would do that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I think that's where some of these streaming services kind of fall apart is that a lot of it is free um, where, you know, maybe, you know, I'm not saying that it's the best option, but it might provide uh, something a little bit more. Um, so where I'm looking for stable, I guess, in the community, you know, but either way, like, it's not that hard to set up a platform that could be set up for streamers if you have the the power to do so you know citizen mech just shared the twitch actual wording it says i'm an artist and i want to paint a nude portrait not intended to be sexual can i stream my nude figure drawing uh we do not yet provide sufficient tools for viewers to limit their exposure to nudity and mature content so artistic and educational nudity are not allowed at this time unless your content meets one of the exceptions outlined you should follow the standard guidelines of the policy. Um, of course. And I'm pretty sure the, if I remember right, the only um, the only exception for art was if you're a body painter, you're allowed to show basically all but nipple. Okay. And it's like, why is a body painter allowed to show their boobs, and we're not allowed to even have boob reference? Right. Yeah. And again. Yeah. So. All, all of the differences. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. Again, they're, they're just yeah, picking Twitch and choosing just... what they want. Yeah, they don't know what they're doing right now. So, but, you know, again, I enjoy the experience of hanging out with people. So I mm -hmm. just kind of, I use this until I find something better. And then I'll go yeah. do that, you know. Yeah, that's all, yeah that's as all I was I saying, uh, like people I was talking games. to uh, Alex Komen and Digi the other night. Um, other day it was night for them um i'm here for the social aspect it's yeah. helping me stay productive um i'm meeting a lot of really cool people i've been more productive in the past two months than i have probably in my entire life oh there you go glad to help <laughs> yeah <laughs> 
No, I agree with that sentence a lot. Yeah, it's definitely been uh, allowing me to be more productive as well. Um, Ryan, a lot of people, yeah, so my TCs would be all over streaming service on our station. I feel like a lot of people would be. Um, but Ryan, to Ryan's point, I, the problem I can see is discoverability. I can see that too, but our station is like pretty popular. Mm hmm. It's getting more <laughs> popular, almost to the point where it's becoming like a, uh, <laughs> almost like an Instagram on its own. Right. Well, I remember when ArtStation was first getting popular, uh, people were saying, you know, you need to have your own portfolio website. You need to have your own portfolio website. And then ArtStation started gathering traction and they're like, you don't need a portfolio website anymore. Just use ArtStation. Everyone understands it. It's industry standard. Right. And then it got to the point where it's like, people are just doing art dumps on ArtStation. So now they're like, ah, uh, maybe have your own portfolio website, but then also have an art dump on ArtStation that you can also show, but not as you're like, this is my showcase portfolio. Yeah, uh, interesting. I know ArtStation is still pretty popular in the industry for mm -hmm. having a portfolio, but you better make it worth it's salt like it better be good yeah. you can't just have it on there to have it on there so yeah that's where the blogs portion come in if you want to dump mm -hmm. on art station create a blog and then do like a oh yeah a and then the, the blog thing was actually even newer than that i forgot about the blogs <laughs> yeah so I, th I think it's a double-edged sword but mm -hmm. i think a streaming service and art station would provide more discoverability to people in the industry since studios go on there actively and see what's going on they could see right. artists working and kind of pick their poison almost. Um, yeah. That's a and possibility. Yeah, there are, I mean, there are studios that, and not just indie studios, but there are studios that stream the entire production cycle on Twitch. So I'm sure they would cool. be happier to be on something like ArtStation. That's cool. I didn't know that. Um, yeah, ArenaNet streams a lot of their stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Casey says, I really need to get my ass in gear. <laughs> I am zero product, productive digitally. I get that, man. Uh, maybe use Daven Art for art dumps and ArtStation for portfolio. That, yeah, that's what I would do. I use mm -hmm. Instagram for my art dumps, and I use ArtStation for my portfolio. And I think that's, that's served me well. Um, I've even had con I've even been contacted because of my portfolio on ArtStation. So... I've actually, I need to clean my portfolio up, uh, and I'm always saying that, but part of the reason I haven't is because I don't have anything new from the past two years, so I'm waiting until I have a new piece to post, and then I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna put that up there to remove some old stuff, go back through and, like, clean up some of my older pieces that I do want to keep, do all that fun stuff. Yeah. Um, Although there is nothing wrong with showing renders. progression. But yeah, it still yeah, needs to I be. Yeah, I mean, a... I might keep the original versions and just be like, okay, this is what it was originally. Here's what I did to fix it. Right. Um. Oh, that would be cool. That's a cool little series. The before and afters. Mm-hmm. I need to figure out a way to make it obvious that that's what's going on, though. Because um, you know, people don't read. Yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah. You you definitely want to make sure you kind of put that put that uh notation somewhere yeah man alive i need to actually use my art station i keep forgetting <laughs> yeah i had an art station like i created my art station six years ago and then i just dumped stuff on there and then i didn't use it <coughs> for like two years and then then i really like figured out what I was going to use it for and then I, the crap I had to remove. Mm. Oh boy. So MJ said uh, ArtStation jumped into the portfolio world right when CG Hub went down, which I forgot about CG Hub. Oh um, wow, yeah, me too. They actually launched early to try and take all the market share of artists that CG Hub left behind. Um, and then he also said, all this talk of dumps is going to get you banned by Twitch. And Smithy goes, heh, poop. And uh, Smithy, <laughs> you weren't here earlier when we were talking to, um, oh God, what is his name? The extruder. 
Happy Extruder. I can't remember. Happy Extruder. Okay. He apparently, well, not apparently, uh, he was joking about making a poop emote NFT. <laughs> and then the name that, the fact that his name is uh, Happy Extruder. Yeah. Uh, next line says, I have a portfolio website that I don't widely broadcast since I know my job asked me to take it down. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um. Oh, wait a minute. I have an art station. Wow, I should use it. Oh, wait. I need something to put on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So my was... issue with my portfolio is that... Same with pretty much everything with my uh, 3D career, is that for so long, I didn't have enough time to dedicate to actually making anything for it. Mm -hmm. um, so then I would have, like, maybe one new piece a year. And there's... You can see some pretty good progression there because of that. But it would have been a lot faster progression if I had been able to put in more time. Mm, I see but that. that also means I just don't have a lot of pieces to put in there. So what is in there, I need to clean up and make better. But then that also takes time. And then I would start getting overwhelmed by like, okay, do I clean up what I have? Do I make something new? I don't have time to make something new. And then by the time I figure out what I'm doing, it's time to go back to work at Six Flags and yay. The struggle's real. Yep. Until I feel you. Uh, my days, NFT <laughs> stuff is getting very toxic in certain areas. I just need to find time to put my mini projects on ArtStation. Yep. Yep. Yeah, it's definitely a vicious cycle. Yeah, and if well, ArtStation gets too crazy, then something else is going to take over. Like, yeah. just like Twitch. <laughs> yeah, trying to find the time to actually post things is so frustrating because it's like, you finish the piece, it's all ready to post, but then you realize, oh god, now I have to actually pose it and render it and make all the nice beauty shots and everything. Like, it's not done until it's presented. Right but it feels like you're done when you actually finish making the thing. So for me, that's part of the struggle that it's like, oh God, I'm, I'm not actually done. Right. No. Well, that's where, yeah, you gotta, yeah, you gotta, whatever you're going for, you really gotta, you gotta present it well, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and I'm not great at presentation because that's something that I never actually learned in school and it's kind of always been a little bit of an afterthought because of the way it was presented to us in school. Well, I think presentation is also trendy. I think uh, there are certain things and vibes that happen yeah. throughout that would make it a lot easier um, if you follow a trend versus... Like, you know, for toy sculpting, I don't have to show any more than... A final render, a clay render, a turntable, and keys if I keyed it. Or articulation mm -hmm. if I articulated it. But I don't have to show anything else. I don't have to show topology. I don't have to show, uh, you know, albedo breakdowns and map breakdowns right. because they don't exist. Um, however... Yeah, I think it actually is considered normal, standard, trendy for game characters right now because it used to be that they wanted to see all of your maps and they wanted to see topology and they wanted to see this that and the other thing and now it seems like people aren't showing a lot of that but then right. they're showing a lot more detailed renders yeah and a good render can help you but mm -hmm. you know they still they still want that stuff you know also too it's like you know I, I heard somebody give a uh, in like a it was like a, it was another streamer. I forget who it was, but he was he was saying, you know, I hire people who um, model props. If I see another gun model, I'm gonna freak out because <laughs> more people who model props model a gun. He's like, so there are guns in everybody's prop portfolio, but the time you spent making a gun is like maybe once once in a blue moon, <laughs> you know. So it's like. Where, where do you yeah, spend your time modeling the thing that want, you want to be noticed? Um, right. I think that's hard, too. Of so. all of the props I've ever modeled to go along with characters, I have made two guns. Both of them were very sci-fi guns. Yeah. And they're under NDA. <laughs> yeah. Good luck at the post office. 
that's what happened uh, with Nick Snox. He's been sitting for months on his uh, project without a decent rater. Yeah. As a student, I need to do it so I can attempt to get a placement for the next academic year, yet it means if I do that, my assignments don't get done. Oh, crap. Uh, that's a double edged sword. Those big head toys are the worst money grab I've seen in the last few years. Not sure <laughs> what they call bobbleheads. Yeah, the, uh, the Funko Pop ones? Pop figures? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's Carbon. Is... Hi, Carbon! Um... Carmen said most of the stuff now isn't even from school, sadly. And honestly, me too. Um, I feel like when I was in school, it was more just like becoming aware that these are things. And then I've done all my learning since school. Yeah. Um, but I've never taken the time to get good at rendering. Um, and then Citizen Max's presentation is so important, though. Hard to believe they slacked on that. Yeah, yeah, uh, but when I was in school, there were 16 schools in the country that taught anything to do with game development, and they had no idea how to actually teach it. There was no standard curriculum or anything. Um, I don't know if there is even now, but a lot of the instructors just weren't really sure what they should be doing and they were teaching to a program rather than teaching us the fundamental skills. Um, I had one instructor in particular who was very good and he was all about teaching fundamentals and he was like, you know, you don't need to own Photoshop, you could do this in MS Paint if you have a strong enough computer to make a big enough canvas, but you just, you need to understand the fundamentals so he he was teaching um hand-painted textures mm. and he worked at blizzard for 10 years he helped develop the warcraft hand-painted style so no oh, that's cool he knew how to teach it, and he he was very like it's all about the process it's bob ross like trust in the process it's gonna look like something awful for the first bit just trust in the process it'll get there anyone can do this if they follow the process. Um, and then the artistry comes in when you start making it your own. Mm -hmm. uh, some people didn't like taking his classes because they thought they should be learning, like Substance Painter had just come out and he wasn't teaching Substance Painter, he was teaching hand-painted textures. So he was teaching Photoshop because that was the thing at the time. He was teaching like how to paint hand-painted wood and rock and metal and um, how to apply these textures to a model once you have your base materials. Hmm, interesting. Uh, but people were like, okay, but like 3D coat. And he's like, if you can do this in 2D, you can learn how to do it in 3D very easily. I'm teaching you the fundamentals. Um, okay, but surface painter. He's like, if you can do this in 2D, you can learn how to do it in 3D very easily. I'm teaching you the fundamentals. <laughs> That's very um, interesting. Susan, next up, do you think artists should get more credit for their work in video games? Absolutely. Of course oh. I do. Yeah, absolutely. People, people don't consider how long it takes to make a game, and not even just the programming side, but the amount of time it takes to make a character um, or an environment or anything. Like, I've had so many people, and I've only been streaming for about a little over two months, but I've had so many people in my channel, including my brother, actually, who have commented on, wow, I never knew how much work actually goes into making a character like this. Hmm, and one in particular made the comment that something like i'm never gonna complain about how long it takes for a developer to make a game ever again <laughs> i'm yeah. like i love you <laughs> <laughs> glad we can be on the same page brother yeah it's it is interesting for sure um let's see message to people with whom that model gun scripts aren't squared that is correct <laughs> they're beveled and rounded <laughs> What teachers was that Mike Kesey's was asking? Um, his name is Jamin Chule. He's uh, at the Academy of Art. 
Mm, very cool. Yeah. I'm now playing with a uh, now playing with a pose on my foot. That's why not. I do try not to name drop because he gets a little a little weird about that. But it's not like I'm saying, oh, he's recommending me for something. No, he's. I'm just saying he was my instructor. <laughs> yeah. Mm, that's okay. Uh, Ooh, that was funky. Do you think artists? Oh, I already read that. Uh, how long have I been sculpting? So that's a complicated question. Um, <laughs> honestly, I think if I actually figured how long I've been actively sculpting, ignoring all the 10 month breaks I took because I was working at Six Flags, it's probably somewhere around four years. I actually started in 2011, but I had to take a lot of time off because I was working too much. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, active, yeah. Actively sculpting at that. Yeah. Uh, you might do a foot later on, Carbon? Yeah, do it. I'm getting those studies, man. Get yeah, Carbon, studies. your studies have been looking really good. Keep doing it. Yep. Carbon's in the mentorship I'm in. He got to see how awful my... <laughs> Anatomy man was last night. Oh, that was embarrassing. You mean awesome? I kind of. I. I didn't forget that I needed to work on it, but I just kept putting it off and kept putting it off because I want to work on my beetle. And then all of a sudden it was Wednesday and I was like, oh god. <laughs> um, I keep getting a twitch purple screen using the multi-twitch thing is this normal so yeah for anybody using the multi-twitch thing if you're getting a purple screen on my side that's because i have affiliate on twitch and that's anytime twitch tries to play an ad if it sees that you're using a proxy site like multi-stream or multi-twitch or any of those um it'll pop up with a purple screen that's like ah you're not using twitch we can't show you an ad um so if it gets annoying, you can always go back to actual Twitch. Um, the reason the multi-stream, like we, we share the multi-stream links just because that puts us both on the same screen, but it's really what's whatever's more convenient for the viewer. Yeah, exactly. All right, I'm gonna try something real quick. I'm posing my, my foot, because I felt I was pretty much done for what we were planning on doing. But what I'm going to do is actually put a cube in here and kind of give it like a floor. Oh, nice. Okay. I'm going to come back here. Let's go to dynamics real fast. And then let's just, no, maybe not dynamics, but we'll go to uh, pose, cloth pose. Is that going to work? Yeah, okay, it's going to work. So we're going to go ahead and kind of just start pressing a little bit it should give us a little bit of um, indentation of where that foot would be might be a little bit of a gap there want to try to arc the foot too. So not only Excellent. is this my first active <laughs> foot, I'm actually like trying to pose it now. Nice. Next Knox says, no, artists don't deserve any credits. I'm not bitter at all. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, I'm not doing this on a layer. I duplicated it, so I have the original foot still. And then I just duplicated the layer because I have the subdivision still blocked in. And then uh, I'm just kind of moving things around. That's also why I have the different poly groups. And then just kind of trying to take it as far as I can with a uh, clay buildup and such, getting some of the toe wrinkles happening. 
some of the compression. Oh, I don't think I noticed a follow. Uh, Baby's first few. Thanks for the follow. Also, I love that name. Do you know as much about anatomy as a surgeon? No way. <laughs> uh, no. No way. I just know the basic forms of a surgeon, like what a surgeon would, the basic forms of the muscles, like where things should be, but the knowledge of a surgeon is nowhere near <laughs> like what that's insane amount of knowledge and dedication i just know the I basic definitely... forms and shapes that sh you yeah. how they should move and how they should work um we were I actually talking about that earlier i actually know all of the forms but i know how to read a reference right that's the other part too reference <laughs> reading yeah cutting for the very first time <laughs> <laughs> Great one, next Knox. <laughs> I got done with a hand in less than three hours, but I want to be funny and pose it into the circle game. No, that was so awesome. More of the knowledge of a bodybuilder. Correct. Actually, that's a great one. Uh, I would definitely say it's more towards bodybuilding yeah. knowledge. Or just uh, general uh, fitness. For sure. Baby's first puke says, I sculpted around then as well and drifted around. Ain't you zebrish in a while? Just get back to it. Um, but yeah, I I had to take a lot of time off because I lived in California and was making like twelve fifty or no, the most I'd ever earned the whole time I lived there was eleven fifty an hour. Mm -hmm. Um, I lived in the Bay Area where that's not even minimum wage there now. Um, yeah. and then I moved to Philly, and then my, the company that moved me to Philly decided to send me to New Jersey and New Jersey is not a whole lot cheaper than California because it's so close to New York yeah. and the most I ever made was the equivalent of twelve fifty an hour and so yeah I had to work so many hours that I just I didn't do enough sculpting for a long time but I'm finally for the first time in my life in a position that I have the opportunity to do art all day, so that's all I'm doing. <laughs> yeah, do it. Seriously. Yeah, that's what I tell people when we talk about, like, progression of art. And, you know, I had somebody ask me how I got to the level that I'm at in only four years. And the reality is, is that I kind of have to thank the pandemic a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. Because it provided me the opportunity to focus on something while looking for work and um then i was like well i'm already doing this maybe i can do this for work instead mm -hmm. and that was that was really helpful um i wouldn't have progressed nearly as fast but yeah getting getting the chance to sit there and, and just focus in it's been really good yeah the the pandemic has helped me in that sense too, um, only for the past few months, but like I wouldn't have gotten the job I had for the game studio I was working for if it weren't for the pandemic, and that's a whole roundabout story. But I also, I'm on unemployment right now because I was working for an indie studio, they're looking for a publisher, they don't have money to pay me, so I'm on unemployment. Yeah. Um, and if it weren't for the pandemic, the unemployment would be probably putting me into a panic because it wouldn't be enough to really get by. Yeah. But I, no. Yeah, I feel very fortunate. <laughs> Knowledge of a cartoonist. I like that Deadpool, except I'm going to add in a little disclaimer. Um, 3D artists can't get away with cheating like 2D artists can. Mm. <laughs> 2D artists have it's the ability to cheat their gravity. Yeah, they, they could cheat their perspective and stuff. They could cheat their anatomy and call it a day, and that makes me jealous just a little bit. Meanwhile, I gotta be like, please make this all work. <laughs> Good to know. My mind boggles when it comes to anatomy. Yep, me too. Um, I, yeah, I studied anatomy when I was in high school. I took AP anatomy. I went to school, my undergrad was in zoology. So I've studied a lot of anatomy from the scientific standpoint. And it's a lot of just rote memorization, which I'm not good at. 
I need to know why things are the way they are, so it's a lot easier for me to understand from the engineering perspective of like this is how the body fits together and how it works and that's kind of more what i've gotten into as an artist right um which with zoology it was just like memorize the names of these things and i'm like but what is it who cares what the name is what is it and what does it do right what does it do (laughs) yeah yeah uh, the pandemic boosted up my anatomy skills with a lot of help from Spicer uh, and being surrounded by artists in voice chat every night. That Yeah, that's mm-hmm. super awesome, Carmen. Yeah, for sure. And that's what's been really good about it. Again, it's provided a way for people to stay in touch a little bit more uh, and to kind of push themselves. You know, because... Doing- working in the past two months than I did the whole time we were not in pandemic. <laughs> yeah, I feel like that's most people. Yeah. I think the thing that boils down to it is like when I was looking at the pandemic, I was constantly asking myself, what do you want to show f- what what do you want to showcase when the pandemic's over? Like the you know, pandemic wasn't gonna be forever. Everybody kind of knew that. So it's like what do I want to look back on and say what this I did what I was did. worth, of, yeah, it was yeah. worthwhile, and you know, it wasn't easy. Like I, when I first asked that question, I was not working on my skills here. I was actually helping a guy build masks. So I, you know, had a couple 3D printers, got in contact. He gave me the files. I was printing, but then as I was looking at his files, I'm like, yeah, these masks are okay, but hey, I have an idea. And then we started designing, and then he asked, hey, are you a 3D modeler? And I was like, yeah. And he's like, well, what do you do? And I said, mostly characters. He was like, oh, cool. Let's take a look at this, that, and the other. So we started talking more. And that's when I decided, oh, this is what I want to do. Okay. Mm-hmm. You know, so then I started working on that. And it it definitely provided a direction. But I needed to stay active. I needed to be on something. <laughs> that sounds bad. But I needed to be <laughs> with a goal. I needed to be on something some drugs <laughs> yeah so. i need i don't do well with being idle um i don't know how to turn myself off like i i need to be busy yeah if i'm not busy, i am miserable right yeah uh, uh my tc let's see Deadpool says yeah true my tc's yeah as artists we don't care about words give us the why and the how of things exactly and meet new people absolutely what yeah. in the hell? Uh, I'm high on substance. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lupus, that's awesome. All right, we got a we got a stream raiders, and then how are you doing on your foot, Kamara? It's Tell me about there. your foot. It's getting there. I'm working on. Uh, so my my toes are all a little narrow, but I'm leaving them narrow for the moment because I don't want them to be like getting in my way. Um, but. Aside from that, I'm fairly happy with how it's turning out. I'm working on the sole and the the creases and the bottoms of the toes right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh my god, a hydrate from Citizen Mac. Yeah. Yeah, I'm now just kind of posing my my mm-hmm. foot. I've been going a little bit slower on this one than uh, the other body parts, partly because I keep stopping because I'm like. I feel like chat's more active today, which is awesome. Yeah. So I've been reading more chat. No, the chat's been super fun today. It's fun every day, but it has been very active today, and I love it. All right, we got a boss to fight. That's nice. Where we're at. That's where we're at. Oop. Good luck, peeps. Good luck. All right, well, um, I'll be right back because uh, nature is yelling at me, so... <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and just kind of showcase where I'm at right now. I'm not done with this foot, but I'll be right back. <laughs> Boo! Learning later in life equals panic. Yeah, um... Honestly, I don't know that it was necessarily, for me, like, 
I don't know that you would call it later in life per se, because I was about the age that people typically go to grad school, and I'm not that old. Um, but I tend to have a lot of panic attacks if I start thinking too hard about whether or not I understand something, or like, am I good at it? I start getting into the imposter syndrome realm, and... Imposter syndrome causes me to have panic attacks. It's fun. But I think we all kind of go through that to some extent. And I don't like the idea that creative jobs have a higher likelihood of not working out and having less stable frequency in jobs while more needed jobs that are currently popular or because uh, science? Is moving that way. Um, put on a pedestal because this will make successful. Yeah, I mean, art creative type jobs have not been science. <laughs> like throughout history, artists don't tend to make a ton of money. There's a reason there's that starving artist trope. Hi, DQ! How are you? I'm good. We are, uh... <laughs> <laughs> um, so, DQ just popped in. Uh, we are doing... Well, I'm doing an autosave right now. Okay. Yeah, so, it's are. still enough. It's foot day. We are sculpting feet. Yeah, we are. Oh, yeah. The toes are really narrow. Um, I need to inflate them a bit. But I've been working on them like this, just so they're not getting in my way at the moment. Um, yeah, if you look at my reference, they're significantly wider. <laughs> I'll have to look at your- let me look at your feet real quick. <laughs> um, you know, I'm gonna just say real quick, I know somebody who does have long toes like that. Mm -hmm. So, it's not too, too far off. <laughs> well, really, the only issue that I'm seeing is just that they're too narrow, but I was doing that deliberately, and I don't know if that's going to be shooting myself in the foot. Uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I was making them narrower than they really are, just so that they wouldn't be getting in my way. They are polygrouped, but I mean, I'm working on the whole foot at once, and Luna is yowling. Pinky toe basically took every piece of furniture out there. I mean, that's not as bent as my pinky toe looks. <laughs> <laughs> there are only fans for feet fetishes, you know? You don't need to ask on stream. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, Kamara, Ryan says, I highly recommend you watch Adam Duff on YouTube. Adam Duff. Why do I know that name? Hey, Luna. Ooh. Did you did you pull it up? Yeah. Is it chat friendly? <laughs> Is it stream friendly? <laughs> um, well, I'm not going to play any of the videos, but it looks like he talks about a lot of the mental struggles with art because we were oh, talking yeah. about impossible and all that while you were away. Um, ah, but also so the aesthetic in his thumbnails, yes, please. That's, yeah. It's got the spooky, creaturey type thing going on that I like. Yeah. Okay, I'll have to. Uh, I'll have to check Easy, out. Luna. I'm gonna keep that tab open so I can watch some of those later. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, with the uh, lupus with the uh, foot fetish thing. Uh, before Kamara and I started streaming, that's the first thing I told her. I was like, are you ready for uh, foot fetishes? <laughs> <laughs> we know that they're... Oh, yeah. Um, okay. Imposter syndrome is real. I didn't go through college until I was 28, over 10 years ago now. Yeah, imposter syndrome... Oh, yeah. I think... If anyone doesn't get it, to, at least to some extent, they're either lying or they're... there's something wrong with them. <laughs> Imposter syndrome. Um, yeah, that happens to me, like, a lot. 
Um, it's crazy, actually. I, I would say, for me, because uh, for those of you who don't know, I started streaming on Pixel Logic, and what was interesting about that was I was talking to them for like two months, and then they had to put me on hold because of an update, and then they said, we'll get back to you. And one week went by, two weeks went by, three weeks went by, and I was like, ah, oh, here it is. This is that moment when they're like, never mind, we made a mistake. Have a good one. And then out of nowhere, they were just like, all right, you ready? And I'm like, oh, Jesus. <laughs> I was like, okay, okay. <laughs> so, yeah, I feel like I get it a lot. Um, yeah. But I also think imposter syndrome is kind of a window into the fact that you know you're open to get better, to mm -hmm. to kind of push yourself beyond because you're already seeing your own failures, your own issues. So I think imposter syndrome is kind of like the the little thing in the back of your head that says we can make this better. But instead, the voice that chimes up first is no, you can't. <laughs> yeah. And you have to tell that voice to fuck off. <laughs> so, yeah, that's my that's at least my take on it. Because every time I feel that way, um, that's the first thing I start to think of is, well, you know, why am I thinking that way? Imposter syndrome on the daily over here. Yeah, yeah. We all have the ability to unlock God mode. We just gotta tap into it. We do. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Yep, it's a real thing. I, I'm actually glad that I'm seeing a lot of um, I'm seeing a lot of people talk more and more about mental health and stuff because I mm -hmm. think that's super important to at least branch out and say what it is you feel on the topic, you know? Yep. Yeah, I try to be fairly open with mine because I know, um, for the most part, I haven't had any of the big, like, oh my god, I thought I was alone sort of moments, but I have had a few. And once I realize that other people feel the same way, I'm just like, I'm not insane. <laughs> oh my god. It is like this big mind blowing moment. Right. Um, and like, once you understand this is a thing, this is a symptom of my, say, my ADHD. This is a thing. Yeah. A lot of people have this. All of a sudden, it's like it's easier to understand. It's easier to uh, to combat. Um, it's easier yeah. to come up with coping mechanisms because, like, I can't afford to go to a doctor. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, wrong one. I had a uh, cloth transpose on, and uh, that was crunching my material. Really should stop typing, playing games. My left hand thumb is going numb and has been tingling for a couple of hours. Someone tell me to stop. Citizen Mac, you should stop. Stop it, Citizen Mac. <laughs> if your thumb is tingling and going numb, you should definitely stop. Agreed. Yep. I feel bad when I think I have imposter syndrome. Yeah, I. I mean, it's not a good feeling. No, it's not. Yeah. But people aren't alone on that. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I've been seeing a lot more um, like celebrity types talking about imposter syndrome too, which is great. Like absolutely. that, uh, that Neil Gaiman video I sent you. Yeah, that was actually very inspiring. Um, MJ Sculpts, how do you go about getting it in with Pixel Logic? Just missed that. Oh, um, I was watching one of their announcement streams, and somebody else asked, "How do how do people become streamers?" And then they said, you just email them that you're, they're like, email us, tell us what you're about, what makes you, you, and what do you think you can bring to the table? And uh, then we'll, we'll have a conversation. Um, and so I was, I was streaming just like this. And then, um, and then uh, Emmy, actually, um, fellow student. Uh, she was like, you should totally apply. So I just sent in my stuff and just said, this is who I am. This is what I do. This is what I've been doing. And then they they ended up getting back to me. Um, they vetted my stuff and then they 
we kind of had a conversation a few times and and then they eventually said yes so and i had imposter syndrome during that whole time too because i was like i don't think i have anything to offer <laughs> I got a hybrid and a posture check from Citizen Mech. Yeah, I, um, so I was saying I got my first job in the industry last May. Um, the whole time I was doing work for them, like every single day, it felt like, do they actually want me working for them or are they just being nice? Like, do they actually like the work I'm doing? What am I doing? I don't belong here. And like every day I was expecting them to contact me and be like, you know, it's not working out. Right. Um, Actually. <laughs> yeah. And right now I am unemployed, but it's not because they don't like my work. It's because they don't have money to pay me right now. Yeah. yeah. And they keep telling me like, oh, we have all these other characters we want to work on in the future. Like, here's the plan for down the road once we do have money. And I'm like, I really hope we get there because it sounds awesome. Right. But in the meantime, you have all this experience and yeah. you can keep reaching out because the companies that I see hiring all the time right now are game studios because mm -hmm. there's a lot going on. Um, but they're they're pretty much from the looks of it set up to to do a lot uh, from home. But what I'm, yeah, and a lot of the studios have basically agreed to never go back to in person. Right. So like that's, fully in person right so that's definitely being that's definitely helping uh people get a job um a little bit more so so it might be something for you while you're on standby just to be like hey i was oh, working yeah. for this company and now you have something on a resume yeah, you don't have to say you weren't being paid at the time <laughs> yeah i'm not sitting around and waiting i am absolutely going to be looking for jobs as soon as i get my portfolio a little bit more up to date yeah um that's part of why I'm doing a mentorship and all that. But, yeah. uh, you know, if they get funding in the meantime, that's awesome. But I also, oh, yeah. I really want to work for a bigger studio. This is my first industry job. I want to work for a bigger studio where I'm not the only character artist because I know there are things that I do wrong. Mm -hmm. And I would like to learn people with more experience. Right. No, that would, that would definitely be helpful. Even beyond things that I do wrong, just learning new things. No, exactly. Well, that's how I feel about my articulation game. I feel like I understand it enough that I'm pretty mm -hmm. happy with, um, you know, putting it down on my portfolio that I can do it. Um, I would just like to, you know, uh, do one that's going to go into mass production with a company that would more likely benefit me to uh, to get better at it, you know. I just that. noticed that Max said, no, you are insane, but we're all equally uh, similarly insane. Stop typing. No, honestly, yeah. Uh, it's just the type of insane. <laughs> yeah, right. I used to talk to, when I was in grad school, we would have um, game studio representatives come and talk to us every once in a while. And they were always talking about, like, you know, how, what's the best way to get hired or to stand out, get noticed? with your particular studio. And most of them would talk about, you know, how to get your portfolio noticed, all that fun stuff. But they, a lot of them, if they got to the interview process, would also say, realistically, if we bring you in for an interview, we want to hire you. We're bringing you in for the interview because we want to make sure that you're a little bit insane, but you're the right kind of insane. <laughs> I can see that, yeah. We're all a little mad here. That's right next time. Yep. Game's getting bigger and bigger, so there'll be more and more employees needed. Absolutely. Yep. It's just a matter of time. Well, and I feel like with uh, the cyberpunk debacle, if you want to call it that, um, people are starting to understand more of what goes into making a game, too, because all the gamers with the death threats being sent to developers and such, um, I've seen people speaking out about it. Like, do you understand yeah. what they into this and i've been trying to do that but it's not like i have a big platform or anything right yeah no it's 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 definitely important to understand what goes into it all and yeah there are more people who are noticing it i believe too um yeah poor cyberpunk just poor mm -hmm. anybody who worked on that game yeah i own cyberpunk it i should play it more 
I haven't done it for a while. I need to play it more myself. I've only put probably about 50 hours into it total, but I love it so much. I'm just always doing art. I don't right. have time to play games. <laughs> try too busy to make them. I know. The struggle's real. Um, oh. And for me, is, is it imposter syndrome when I look at the work and I think I'm a terrible artist? Does that count? Yeah, I mean, that's part of it. Um, I think all artists think that we're not good. That's yeah. just that territory. Imposter syndrome is more along the lines of I'm not a real artist. Right. Um, Where you don't feel like you belong in the place that you're at. Um, right. Actually, Adam Savage talked about that when he was with um, um, IL. IL, yeah, ILM. Uh, he said that uh, he got hired and he was sitting at his desk looking at everybody building stuff. And one of his projects was R2-D2. And he was saying that, you know, he was just waiting for somebody to put their hand on his shoulder and say, OK, you're out. Get out of here. Like, you, you don't you don't know what you're doing, you know, type thing. But he said it never happened. But that's mm -hmm. the feeling that you get, that you don't belong where you are at. Um, and yeah, that, that could be a bit, that could be pretty tough. Yeah. And like the Neil Gaiman video I was talking about, I mentioned, um, he, so Neil Gaiman, for anyone who doesn't know, he's author. He's the one that wrote uh, Coraline and Sandman and several episodes of Doctor Who and American mm. Gods and all kinds of things. Um, one of my favorite authors, if not my favorite author at this point, but nice. he gave a commencement speech at an art school. Um, and in the commencement speech, part of it was talking about how he, even today, with as much success as he's had, he still feels like someday someone's going to show up at his front door wearing a tie and holding a clipboard. And I don't know why he's holding a clipboard, but he's always holding a clipboard. And he's going to hand me my own tie and say, OK, it's time to stop making up stories for, for a living. Uh, you need a real job. Right, exactly. Yep. I know, isn't that crazy? Yeah. It's, yeah, that was, that was super inspirational when you shared that one. But yeah, it, that's kind of how it feels. Mm-hmm. You know. Next Nox asks, are you doing character and props for games or actual programming and development? Just uh, just characters and props. Just the 3D stuff. And I really don't know much about environment art either. I feel like I should look into it more just so I kind of understand more of what happens. But I right. don't understand a lot of it. Um, uh, Ryan, so yeah. uh, you guys are talking my world right now. I have so many things to say, I can't keep up. <laughs> we do a hangout. We're gonna do it soon. I promise. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, I'll I'll figure out a time, like on a Saturday, yeah. or something. Um, last time for now. I think it's better to know why someone isn't hiring you. For example, financing than it is to actively blame yourself, your work, your effort. Yeah, exactly. If they, if uh, the company I was working for, if just suddenly they were like, okay, you're done, I'd be like was i not good enough oh god um, yeah and then i, I might, it might get me panicking enough that i wouldn't be able to be working on things right now i would just be too in my own head about whether or not what i did for them was good enough right yeah yeah that's that's tough mm -hmm. yep but it yeah you know but it, it does usually start kind of small it does posture syndrome definitely feels like you know in the beginning that oh it's just little things like oh this isn't good enough you know i mean the real trick too is that like it's okay to look at your work and say this isn't where i want it to be this isn't at the level of and then name someone but is it better than what you did last time you know those right. are questions i usually ask myself and if it is then be kind to yourself because yeah I always you're only gonna get better I try to look to other artists for inspiration and I look at my own work for comparison. Yeah. Um, Agreed. Only compare your own work to your, or com only compare yourself to your own work. Um, are you improving? And if not, maybe it's time to get some feedback. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. I'm actually going to this here one more time. Um, 
Oh, I just saw that comment about death threats over a game. Yeah, so, uh, Cyberpunk. Uh, the TLDR. Um, they had to postpone the game because it's a massive game and it wasn't done. And the publishers, the board, all the money people at CD Projekt Red who have nothing to do with the actual development were pushing unrealistic deadlines and the developers weren't meeting them because they could not meet them. Um, new yeah. phrase I learned recently is you can't make a baby in one month with nine women. Uh, <laughs> you like that one. Things, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there are certain things that just take time and the people with the money don't understand that they can't just throw more money at the problem. Yeah. Um, but so they just kept pushing and kept pushing and people were working 80, 90 hour weeks for the better part of eight years, like probably at least half of the eight years they were working on that game. Um, and then when they had to postpone the launch, gamers got so mad that they started sending death threats to the developers and it's like, okay, they're between a rock and a hard place. They've got the money people saying work harder, work faster. They've got the gamers right. saying work harder, work faster. And they're sitting there going, we're doing the best we can. Right, exactly. Uh, and then we all know what happened when it did release. Um, the They decided to make it available for older consoles, which was probably not the best plan because at that point it had been in development specifically for new gen consoles and PC. Um, there's technology involved in the engine that doesn't work on older consoles. So they had to rebuild a lot of things, which meant they had to scrap things that they were planning on adding because they didn't have time to develop it. They had to rebuild things for older consoles. Oh, and then so. they really didn't even have time to do that. So it was broken. So then when the game came out, people got all pissed off saying you shouldn't have released it. You should have pushed it back more. It's broken. I hate this. And started sending more death threats to the developers. <sighs> yeah. Oh, that's frustrating. Yeah, people need I'm to calm like, down. Right? Like, don't be mad at the people who are literally just doing their job and they're putting in so many years of their lives and so many hours during those years and making all these sacrifices and not spending time with their families if they have them um, or doing anything else. Um, yep. And then, oh, game not perfect, you should die. No. Yeah, that's just, just no. Yeah, none of that is helpful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know. People suck, absolutely, Snickles. Yep. So... All right. Yes, Good Omens is a very good show. <laughs> good Omens is amazing. Yeah. David Tennant. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good in that show. I love it. But I never guessed uh, you liked him with that comment. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> Citizen Mac, actual, actual last type. I fear that someone would confront me yelling that my... Uh, ADHD, autism, dyslexia is a lie, that I'm a fraud, that I'm just lazy bum sitting on my ass, living from the government, faking disability, that I uh, get forced into a job that I can't handle, and that everyone always blames me for everything, but this is most likely my, just my fear of being normal. Uh, this used to be a lot worse, particularly after I dropped out of school. This got pretty dark. I'm doing better. Yeah, I mean, I think imposter syndrome hits people with things like mental illness too like do i really have this was the diagnosis just because i pushed too hard right exactly yeah, yeah. all that stuff yeah i see some subhuman shit when it comes to people sitting at their keyboards with online society yeah exactly right like on top of that you have family and friends telling you what you need to do or quit dreaming get a real job yeah right especially as an artist get that a lot Oh, I get so many people sending me job listings that they're like, hey, I found this job listing. I thought you'd be interested. And it's like a graphic designer or something. And I'm like, thanks, but I don't know anything about graphic design. And then they always get all butthurt and they're like, well, I was just trying to help. I'm like, I, well, I, that, yes, I understand that. And I said, thank you, but I don't know graphic design. Right, exactly. That is not what I do. Yeah. 
Well, it's still art, isn't it? What? Mm. Uh. <laughs> Maybe. What do you mean? Uh, I did graphic design and. Are there side effects to treat your cancer? What? <laughs> There was not a whole lot of artistry involved in the graphic design I did. It was more of like, the client needs this in two hours. Get your ass in oh, here. Yeah. Do it now. <laughs> it happens. It happens to us all. Ooh, got a few more minutes. How's your foot coming? I'm at the detailing stage, I would say. Um, nice. I Bulked up the toes a bit. I think they're looking better. Nice, nice. Yeah, I'm doing some some little fun details now because I posed it. Mm -hmm. But I can show you my uh, non-posed toe uh, foot. I mean, when we do the critique part. Yeah. I notice people in the game industry get paid a lot less and get ridden like mules. Why? Uh, because we love it. <laughs> <laughs> love the work we're passionate about it and there's always somebody willing to do it for less money than they're worth right it's a very competitive industry and it's unfortunate yeah and that was part of the decision making i process i went through all the pros and cons of what i've heard for the game industry and then the thing is is that I, w I wouldn't mind working for the game industry if it was a project that i thought was gonna be cool or fun um but, you know, because it's so competitive right now, you know, mm -hmm. and the amount of time I can actually provide and give of myself, you know, um, can I can I do that well in that industry, you know? And before the pandemic, I was like, yeah, maybe I could studio work. Um, now I'm not too sure, but it's also not my passion. And so I don't want to try to get into something that I'm not 100% passionate about. While I yeah. love playing games, I don't know if I would love working in games. Right. So, but if the right opportunity uh, presented itself, I, I may re-ask that question. Yeah. And yeah, I I had never thought about going into toys and collectibles because that wasn't really a thing when I was first learning modeling. Um, 3D printers were still relatively new. Yeah. And um, the idea of using ZBrush for sculpting toys was also still relatively new um for you yeah yeah and i didn't even know what zbrush was until i started doing 3d modeling so oh, interesting um i didn't know what maya was i didn't know what 3d modeling was <laughs> <laughs> i went to school thinking i like art i like games i want to be a concept artist because that's all i knew um yeah that's actually a big misconception there's a lot of people who are like oh you do zbrush you must be in games or or uh, mm -hmm. movies and it's like mm, no no actually yeah uh, Paul Gabry spoke on that at one point um, in one of his classes that I was uh, taking he was like everybody always says that but there's like so many things out there right because <laughs> Paul Gabry's yeah, into I, toys yeah you know but yeah it's always interesting to me watching like especially the Pixar streams and watching all the different uh, artists that stream on there and just the the frequency of certain questions you see because there will always be somebody asking are you going to read to apologize this or if somebody is going to read to apologize why are you going to read to apologize this right um, exactly and is this going to be for a game no it's not okay but why are you making it then and it's like because mm. <laughs> there's more things than games yeah <laughs> um because i want to Nowadays, and I found comfort in realism, realistic goals, and reasons to do stuff instead of, I feel like I need to do this, otherwise I'm gonna fail. Yeah, I, I think fear of failure is also part of the imposter syndrome thing. It's probably like a subset of it somehow. <laughs> yep. Uh, I hope CD Projekt Red isn't gonna be forced to do this, or to go the same road as Naughty Dog. They lost 70% of its employees due to massive crunch. Um... I think, based on talking to some of the people I've met from Eastern Europe and just what they've said about work culture in that part of the world, people in, is it Poland? I think CD Projekt Red's in Poland. Um, sure, let's go with that. 
they're, uh, they're in Eastern Europe anyway. Um, just the way the work culture is in that part of the world, they're more likely to be willing to put in those hours. So I don't think they're necessarily going to lose their entire workforce. But the thing I worry about is that the company is going to fold or that they're going to decide to scrap any development they're still working on for Cyberpunk because it is such a good game if people would just stop yelling about it being broken. Right, exactly. Also, it's not that broken. If you look back at uh, Skyrim's release, it was melting Xboxes. <laughs> <laughs> it was. Yay for melting. Okay, real quick. I'm trying something real fast. I was fortunate enough to work as a background extra with Michael Sheen. He was a really nice guy. That's awesome. He seems like a really nice guy. Of course, that could just be because he's an actor and, you know, he's paid to be good at acting. Actors are nice guys. <laughs> now, let's see here. Gravity profile. Oh, shit. Let's do one. Zero. I'm a social and not often hyperactive, empathetic human who barely makes typos. <laughs> Nicely Except sold. when I open my mouth and blah 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 stops typing. Oh. Uh, nice sculpted. I'm gonna have to say this in my yeah. watch list. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. DQ says, oh, it's fairly broken for a game of its status. Yeah, that's fair. But I mean, Sky Skyrim was of the same status. Um, yeah. It wasn't in development for as long, but it was just as big of a release, I would say. And it was arguably more broken people weren't as upset about that one right okay all right so let's try something real quick got some ugly hairs on there because <laughs> <laughs> i sculpted a guy's foot i figured why not <laughs> you have cyberpunk on ps4 Ooh, still broken that sucks i'm sorry <laughs> yeah i'm sorry too Okay. No, I actually, the person I mentioned earlier today that I said we're not friends anymore, um, the reason we're not friends is because he cared more about yelling at cyberpunk developers than he did about our friendship. So mm, Okay, yeah, I could see that. He got it on PS4, and my favorite part of, about his whole, like, screaming into the void about this was that about two weeks after it had come out, I had maybe like 15 hours logged because I was doing art and mm -hmm. didn't have time to play that much. And meanwhile, he's been bitching and moaning about it being so broken. And he's going, oh, I just, I can't get the last trophy I need for platinum because it's too broken on my machine. Ah, oh, fuck this game. And I'm like, you're two weeks in and you have literally all but one trophy for the entire game. Yes, no. clearly it's playable. Yeah. All right. <laughs> anyway. Nope, nope, you're good. Okay. Let's see if I can do that real quick. And bake that layer. Bake that one there. There we go. Okay. There's my feet. There's my feet! You're a PC master. I wish I could get a PS5. Yeah. I can't torn on the PS5 front. All right, we got Stream Raiders and then a small little critique. Yeah. All right. So I'll have you go first. Uh, do you want to critique the pose or do you want to critique just the foot itself? Uh, either way. Okay. I think I'll give you just the the um, the foot itself. Okay. I got to a point where I was happy with it, but I wanted to do something. I enjoy the jank if I'm being honest. Honestly, I do too. Um, I've had some fun little bugs happen, and they're so entertaining. All right. Yeah, I have it on PC too. All it's right. like. Go ahead. Oh, I'll, I'll be out like uh, in the middle of the day. You know, d depending on the time of day, there are different people out. There are more people out during the day than there are at night. Sometimes areas get super crowded. Mm -hmm. And sometimes when it gets really crowded things don't load in quite as quickly so i had a moment where everybody was suddenly cowering as though i had a weapon drawn but i didn't 
and they just stayed that way for a good 20 minutes. It was great. Oh, nice. It was just so funny. It, it looked like it, they had joined a cult or something, because they were all facing the same direction, and they were all in the fetal position. Oh, that's funny. Okay, so I'm going to give you a screen grab of, like, all the angles. Like a three-quarter angle, side, back, side, See, I haven't and had bottom. a bug that I've seen in the game. And top. Something like that. The, uh, and I'll screen grab that. Right here. What I'll do is I'll screen grab it and then we'll throw it in Discord and then we could just kind of yeah. kind of swap. So we'll call this feet. Hopefully this guy, uh, this was helpful for you guys. Um, or just fun in general. Me. It's been helpful for me too, which has always been cool. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna th I'm gonna throw it into ZBrush. No, let's throw it into art. Let's go to artwork. Bloop. And then let's throw oh, my mystery. feet in there. Feet. Feet. Yep. This has been a cool study. I like it. Heck yes, it's been great. Awesome. 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 <laughs> Snickles, I didn't read that. Pixel fuckers is the term I've heard for that. <laughs> yeah. People will feel more entitled. My favorite with all of the um, people complaining about the game were the ones that demanded a refund from PlayStation. And then when they got their refund, they got really upset that they didn't get to keep the game. Oh, interesting. Like, that's how refunds work. Have you never refunded anything in your life? Come on. Yeah, maybe not, no. <laughs> All right, what I'm also going to do is I'm going to post my pose in the Discord, but just for fun. Because I think it was a fun pose. various angles okay Bloop. go ahead and save this and a speed to all right and I'll post that in there in the discord and then I'm gonna download yours actually no I'm not gonna download I'm just gonna showcase it nice and big <laughs> okay but you're also going to showcase mine so Bloop. yes so I'll just put the tab of the multi-stream in my stream, if it'll let me. There we go. Yeah! So I'll just do that. Nah, that's a little bit much. That's a little bit much. Never mind that. <laughs> Heck yeah, it's going to be great. Okay, so go right ahead, Kamara. Tear my feet apart. <laughs> and actually, I'll just uh. showcase what you're looking at on mine. For people who are over here. Okay, go. So the first thing I was thinking when I saw them is they seem very wide, but I don't know what reference you were using, and maybe this person has very wide feet. Um, they actually remind me a lot of my dad's feet. He had very wide, blocky feet. But um, <laughs> it's it's kind of hard to judge like overall proportions because feet come in so many different shapes and sizes. Mm-hmm. Um, the toenails are a little bubbly. Okay. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah. Yeah, I agree there too. I could probably, I should probably clean that up. And also too, it's probably like if I use different, if I use sub tools for nails, it probably would be a better experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was kind of having the same issue with mine. My nails aren't ideal. Yeah. Am I gonna print it? Probably, Ryan. Actually, I probably print the post one, yeah. Print just the foot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I would say my own critiques looking at my foot, just to throw in a bonus. Um, 
I was really shoddy with the uh, with the nails for sure. The texturing, I just kind of threw that in blatantly. But um, I was referencing my feet, but I feel like I feel like something's a little off under with the with the bottom of the foot. Maybe I don't have the right scoop. Yeah, I think um, there's a tendon or something or a ligament that runs right along this area. So the arch of the foot doesn't go quite as far over to the mm -hmm. outside ridge. Um, Wait, which one? So right along, yeah, kind of halfway between the outside ridge and the uh, inner arch. I'm pretty sure there's like a ligament or a tendon that runs along there. Um, Maybe, yeah. And it like, like feeling my own feet, I can tell it's not super apparent unless I flex my toes, but. Yeah, uh, somebody, uh, baby's first puke. Are the tendons visible all the way to the ankle? Um, they can be. It depends okay. on the person. Mine are pretty visible um, with just standing. So, but I mean, some of the reference I have definitely showcase softer feet. Um, well, and that's the thing, like, with the rest of the body, like, we don't tend to see bare feet very often. So it's hard to know if it looks like a real foot as much as, like, if you're looking at a hand, it is very apparent whether or not it looks like a real hand because you're staring at hands all day. They're in front of your face. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I think that's actually one of the things that makes feet hardest, or not hardest, but harder, um, is that we don't look at them very often. It's probably one of the least viewed body parts. I, I agree, yeah, definitely. But, I mean, overall, not too shabby. <laughs> Looks like a foot. <laughs> Pet pedicure for sure, like Snickles. Alright, I'm gonna take a peek at your feet. I'm gonna see what you say on your stream or see what you're pointing at and such okay um yeah see i actually like i actually really like the underside of your foot a lot i feel like maybe that's something i didn't get is this uh, little tendon that snaps there the toes definitely feel a little long mm. um but i know somebody with long toes so i wouldn't i that's like I, I feel like toes can be pretty much however they want as long as you got five. Right. I've, I've actually, seen people with like full finger toes. It's kind of crazy how different they can be. Yeah, I actually love how asymmetrical uh, your your big toe is, and uh, like the third or fourth toe. Now they're they're just different enough. They're not super. Uh, they're not the same thing, which is nice. Um, I do feel on the heavier critique side the inner ankle bone looks a little broken looks a little weird i don't yeah. know if that's just position I, and then the way the scoop of the I foot actually got a reference when i made that phone <laughs> <laughs> but then the scoop of the um the, the scoop going into the inside of the heel looks a little like right about here looks a little like it's plain change it's very harsh and oddly placed um mm -hmm. the only other thing i would say is that maybe i would raise the arch i mean not the arch the top of the foot maybe i would bring that up a little bit but i guess the, i mean that's i think that's a little bit i i would say that's that's more preference and then mm -hmm. the i don't know if this is different between a man's foot and a woman's foot um exaggerative but on mine i noticed so I've done feet enough to know that the outer bone of the foot is much lower than the, than the, like, like drastically lower than yeah. the top. And you have the hint of there, but I, but I feel like you almost have a little bit of a Kangle thing happening. Um, but outside <laughs> yeah, of that, that was... it's really, I mean, as it's, it's a good foot. I like the underside. I like the wrinkles you're adding. The toenails are a lot cleaner than mine for sure. <laughs> <laughs> they're still not great, but they're there. So, yeah, I, I think o overall, it's a good learning experience on both sides. Yeah. My uh, personal critique for myself would have been that ankle area. I wasn't looking at a reference while I was making that part. 
I was just basically feeling my own ankle, mm -hmm. um, which is not ideal. And my ankle, the inner bone, it is higher, but it's only about a thumb width higher. Wow, really? Mine's huge. Yes. Mine is like <laughs> almost a whole, like, I would say it's like half of that bone size higher. But again, I don't know if that was man or woman. Like, I keep looking at my All feet right, as yeah, reference. Just, like, that might be skeletal structure differences. That might just be people have different shape and sizes. I don't know. Yeah. What? We're different? Uh, Martin's out for right. the day. Fun as always. Feet both look amazing, in my opinion. <laughs> Thanks, Martin. Dude, thank you so much, brother. Take it easy, my friend. Yeah, overall, I think it's really great. I think we can nitpick the crap out of this, but um, yeah. overall, no, we both... Uh, really great job. Um, oh, um, Citizen Mech had one thing to note on yours. Let me pull that image back up. Oh, I closed it. Oh, anyway, he said... Um, what I noticed is the Achilles seems very absent, but I have not looked at mine, but it looks like it's a bit shallow. Uh, let's see. Where'd the picture go? Yeah, I was uh, looking at my foot on that. I mean, I can see what you mean. I'm... I think yeah. I've definitely seen Achilles that are... Like, do you mean it's too close to the ankle bone? Like, there's not enough different... Oh, I'm not even showing this on my screen. You guys can't see what I'm pointing at. <laughs> um, but do you mean, uh, like, the distance from the Achilles to the ankle bone is too shallow? Um, yeah, what's funny like is... Feet I go ahead. That look like that. My feet look... My foot looks like that. That's actually what I was referencing uh, oh. on mine. I have a little fatter foot, though. <laughs> but yeah if i'm trying to if i'm really trying and that's the trick so if we're really trying to showcase um all the different aspects of the foot then you would want to you definitely want to sculpt more towards the perfect foot which showcases everything right um which it's been hard to find reference for the quote-unquote perfect foot whereas yeah. it's really easy to find reference for the ideal body right but I do agree, like, you know, I probably could have carved that in a little bit deeper. And that's actually, like, if we look at, just real quick, my pose. So, if we... Uh, I threw it in the Discord as well. If you look at the pose, don't mind the, the fiber mesh that didn't render correctly. Um, I really <laughs> cut in that tendon section when trying to pose it. Because when I point my foot like that, that really starts flaring out. And so I kind of made sure to to push it when I was trying to pose real quick. Yeah. Um, and so in that in because it's like I don't know without looking at references what the foot actually is supposed to look like. Right. Yeah. I don't stare at my feet enough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. But no. But I think this was great. And no, thank yeah. you for the feedback too. I really appreciate it, everybody. Um, I love yeah. any and all feedback. Yep. The difference is between male and female, Ryan says. Nice job. Right. And your height will affect that as well. Oh, interesting. Good to know. Oh. I bet weight does too. Because, I mean, you're going to have more... Like, fat probably doesn't accumulate a whole lot in your feet, but I would imagine around the ankle. Um, Snickle said she would have gladly sent us uh, pictures of... <laughs> pictures of her feet. <laughs> <laughs> next time, Snickles. Next time, we'll take those photos. <laughs> uh, Citizen Mech on your side said, yeah, I think it was more of the depth between the Achilles heel and the bone. Uh, okay. The post foot shows it better. Uh, I feel like I need to send a picture of my foot to really convey what I'm trying to say. No, I think I get it, Citizen Mech. I actually... Yeah. Uh, I think that's, this, that's where the differences of feet come... Because, I mean, you know, I've looked at other sculptures um, of feet of, like, the Hulk, for example. It's a big one where it's just a mass with little toes and nails. Um, I think feet can be a little bit more interpreted. Um, mm -hmm. But I also do agree, like I said earlier, with, with sculpting, using the, quote, perfect foot... Uh, as a model, you know, to showcase every bit of it would probably benefit if it was like a standalone piece, which is actually why I chose to pose mine. Because then I was like, oh, I'm going to pose it this time 
to really like kind of bring all that out. Yeah. So, but MJ yeah. says awesome feedback all around. <laughs> yeah. No, I really. This was a lot of fun. I scare people with my feet. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now everybody needs to just uh, take pictures of other people's feet and send it. And... Right. And this is how we got banned. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, this was awesome. I really enjoyed it. Um, I'm going to raid uh, Akana, and maybe you should raid Akana too. We should dual, we should dual raider. I think that'd be fun. <laughs> Freak her out. But we'll offset it so it's like one right after the other. All right. Oh, let's um, see here. And yeah, I'll be back in a little bit. I'm gonna be. Back at, in a little under two hours, I'm going to come back and work on my beat a little bit more. Uh, so if anybody wants to come join me again and hang out a bit more, I will hopefully be joined by Living Vertex, but he is still on booby band, so we'll see. <laughs> Wiki feet who? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. No. Um, more stream. Thank you so much, guys. Really, really appreciate it. And I'm glad you guys are enjoying this because... Uh, mm -hmm. I know, I know both Kana and I are, sorry, Kamara and I are. I just typed Kana as I said Kana. <laughs> <laughs> all right, everybody. Thank you guys so much for hanging out. Um, and we'll see you all tomorrow being Friday. So tomorrow is face. And remember, we're not sculpting likenesses. We are doing uh, a face, not their face. Um, so we're going to basically kind of cover all that and just walk through what we do. Um, so if you guys have any questions, feel free to let us know. Because that one should be the most fun, I think. But Yeah. Anyway, all right. Max, thank you entertainment. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. <laughs> yes, we will be on tomorrow. We'll be on noon Eastern Standard Time tomorrow. Um, and I will be back at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time today. So. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, guys. I will chat at you all later. Bye, 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 bye.